Here in New York, Delaware, beautiful sunshine for playoff football. We kick off the first round of the 2023 FCS Championship with the Patriot League champion, the Lafayette Leopards. They take on the CAA's Delaware Blue Hens. The bracket, 24 teams reach the FCS playoffs. The top eight teams get a first round bye. The winner of this game heads to Big Sky Country next Saturday to take on the number two overall seed, Montana. We welcome you inside Delaware Stadium. Robert Lee and former North Carolina Central quarterback Jordan Reed with you. Beautiful day for football here in the first state. Jordan, I know you were a quarterback. You love slinging it around. You love throwing the ball all over the field. Playoff football late in the year. These teams are going to rely on the running game. It is, and it's a little bit different. Every play counts when we're talking about playoff football, but it's magnified a little bit more now just because it's win or go home. And I think with both of these offenses today, they're going to rely very heavily on the running game. One team in Delaware is down to their third quarterback, while also we have two very special and talented running backs that we're going to talk about here in a second that I'm really excited about. Let's take a look at those. Lafayette features sophomore Jamar Curtis, who's second in the country in rushing yards. Jamar Curtis coming off of his best game of the season against Lehigh. Three touchdowns last week. You talk about a slow too fast through type of runner. He bounces around, and he has fantastic vision. Number 22 is going to be heavily involved. I think 25 is the magic number that he has to reach today, whether it's receiving or getting receptions out of the backfield and also rushing, of course. He has to get 25 touches somehow, some way. That's when the offense is at their best. You talked about Delaware down to their third string quarterback. They're going to rely on Marcus Yarns. Expect to see a heavy dose of number 21 today. You're going to see him in every way, form, or fashion. They're going to split him out wide. They're going to run him out of the backfield. He can be in the slot. Number 21, Marcus Yarns, is going to be heavily involved in this offense. And when you're down to your third quarterback, a quarterback best friend is being able to lean on this run game. This offensive line of Delaware averages 309 pounds. So I think all five of these guys up front, they've gotten better as the season has progressed. And I expect I expect Marcus Jones to have a, a very good day today. Glorious weather here in late thanks late November. Thanksgiving holiday just passed. 44 degrees, beautiful sunshine. The sun will set towards the end of the game around 445. Lafayette won the toss. They deferred to the second half, and they will kick off to start the game. Lafayette, the Leopards, in the white jerseys as the road team. And Delaware, the home team, in the home black jerseys with yellow numbers. Ready to kick it away will be Darren Wu, the kickoff specialist for Lafayette. And back deep to receive Jordan Townsend for Delaware. Also back for Delaware is Joe Nathan Silver, a backup running back. Set to go. Playoff football winner moves on to take on Montana, the number two seed, next Saturday night at 9 o'clock. Lafayette comes in 9 and 2. They've won eight of their last nine, and they won the Patriot League this year for the first time in 10 years. Wu has it teed up at the 35, and we're set to go. Kick is away, and we are underway. The kick is a short one that will be taken by Townsend on the run at the 12. Townsend slips down and falls just short of the 25-yard line. Huge storyline in this game. Delaware lost their top two quarterbacks in last week's game. Starter Ryan O'Connor was hurt early in the second quarter. His backup, Zach Marker, was hurt on the next series. They will start their third-string quarterback, a true freshman, Nick Minicucci. Yes, Minicucci, I'm excited to see him. And it's different going into the game knowing that you're going to be the starter as opposed to take, taking scout team reps. And that was the big adjustment that Coach Ryan Carter talked about this week. He's had a full week of knowing that he's going to be the starter, and they're not, they're not, they're not scared of allowing him to throw the football, even though we expect a heavy dose on the run today. Out of the shotgun, the freshman Minicucci will hand it off for Yarns. Marcus Yarns breaking tackles up the middle, close to a first down. He's out to the 35, a gain of 10. Expect a heavy dose of the run game. That's what Coach Ryan Cardi talked about. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. They understand that Minicucci is going to make some mistakes. He's a true freshman making his first college start. The best way for a quarterback to be welcomed into a game or warmed up into a game is being able to lean on that running game. You see the numbers on Minicucci this season from Midland Park, New Jersey, the New York, New Jersey border, North Jersey. Played his high school ball at powerhouse Don Bosco Prep. He stands in the pocket. He scrambles to the right side. He gets away from one tackler. He throws it. It's caught for a first down over the right side to tight end Braden Bros. How about that for your first pass of the day? Being able to make some off script plays, that's what you want. You want him to be comfortable and confident. They tried to go with an easy, quick game throw to the top right there. 
but he was able to make some off script manipulation plays right there. And that was a fast fantastic way to start the game. Even though the play didn't go as planned, it showed that, OK, I take my first pass. I'm now I'm warm and I'm into the game. I'm in the game right now. Gets the jitters out a little. Gets the jitters out right, right away. So the Don Bosco prep product will hand it off for Yarns running over the right side. And Marcus Yarns, the senior running back, takes it for a gain of about five. Minakuchi has played in four games this season. He played really in, in a blowout against Hampton. He played very late in that game. The second half, he played against the starters at Towson, but they were up big at halftime. Played sparingly against Campbell. Most recently played almost three quarters last week in a loss to Villanova. Really struggled, nine out of 21, a touchdown, two interceptions, only 55 yards. But again, went into the game as third string, so really hadn't practiced at all all week. He play actions. He steps up in the pocket, looking to get away again. Minakuchi rolling out, looking downfield, and he'll throw it out of bounds. An incomplete pass. But as a head coach, you're happy to see that. The one thing you don't want him to do is turn the football over. The one thing you don't want him to do is turn the football over. He's gotten some pressure, which is what Lafayette is known for. They have 35 sacks this year, which is the fifth most in the FCS. So one thing we knew that they were going to be able to do coming into the game was being able to pressure the quarterback. But for Ryan Cardi, you're happy to see that just because he threw the ball away. He did not make a boneheaded mistake right there and make a turnover. Has shown some good mobility so far. Faces a third down and five. Looking over to the sideline to get the play. It's a handoff. And Yarns is about a yard short of the first down. Could go for it here on fourth and two. First big decision of the game right here for Ryan Carter. Let's see what he does. It looks like he's keeping the offense on the field. Actually, it was Joe Nathan Silver on the carry. The backup running back, a sophomore. As Yarns comes back into the game now on fourth down, first big play of this game just underway. I would be surprised if the ball is not handed off to number 21 right here. I think he's going to lean on his playmaker and his best player on offense, probably an inside zone play right here to Marcus Yarns. Marcus Yarns now lines up behind Minakuchi. He'll get the handoff over the right side and dragging a tackler forward. I think, I he, think he came up a yard short. I think he's short. Big play by Lafayette. Excellent stand by the Leopards on the first drive of the game. It's a great job by Tim O'Hearn right there, being able to, sh they went outside zone right there, trying to test the perimeter of this defense. Tim O'Hearn did a great job of shedding the offensive tackle right there. He's been banged up throughout the yeah. week. We didn't even think he was going to play today. So him coming in and making some big plays, that's an outstanding play. That's how you want to start a road team going into a tough environment like Delaware. Lafayette couldn't ask for a better start in this game. Breakout season for O'Hearn, the defensive end from the Dallas area. Nine tackles for loss this season. So Lafayette goes on offense. Excellent field position from the 42, first and 10. Quarterback Dean DeNoble. And the player we spotlighted in the open, Jamar Curtis, the running back, number 22 to his right, now to his left. Low snap. Quick throw out into the flat. Wide open, Mason Gilbert, the tight end. Breaking tackles and out of bounds. Picks up a first down across midfield. You're going to see these tight ends, both Mason Gilbert and also Dallas Holmes, being involved very early on. See some 12 personnel. These tight ends are a big part of this offense. Mason Gilbert is down on the sideline. He's grabbing at his leg, and they're going to stop the play. He's just barely off the field. Gilbert was injured on that play. He's at about the 41-yard line just off the sideline. And that would be a big loss for this offense. He's such a big part of this passing game. First-team all-conference player, three-time all-conference selection overall. So I, we're just hoping for the best just because this would be a massive injury and a massive loss to this offense. Literally a big party, 6'8", 255, yeah. a huge target. Yes, and they use them not only in the open field but in the red zone right there. That was a great opening script play by offensive coordinator Tim DiMuzio right there. I really like that play call, being able to switch up and give them a different look early on just because this Delaware defense is really tough. They incorporate what's called a three safety look. So they like to incorporate those safeties and you can't really tell which safety is interchangeable in this defense. Gilbert did hobble to the injury tent. It is a pickup on first down of about 12 yards. Dean Denoble, sophomore quarterback. Throws over the middle, has a man inside the 35-yard line for a first down to Carson Persing. 
You're going to hear me say these three letters all day long. RPO. It is a big part of this Lafayette offense. They love run pass options offense. They love run pass options in their offense. They like some tempo too. They'll have the first handoff for Tremar Curtis picking his way up the middle for a solid gain of six to the 24. The great thing about RPO is that it puts defenders in conflict. And with so much attention on Jamar Curtis, those linebackers start to come up. And what happens with the run pass option or the RPO, you're able to overcompensate those defenders coming down into the box. And you can throw those quick slants behind their head, which is what you saw on the quick throw of the person right there to play before. Lafayette looking very sharp on its opening drive to the 24-yard line, second down. Dallas Holmes. Is to the right. He's the backup tight end. He's to the right of the quarterback, DeNoble. Curtis in there as well. Now Holmes takes a step forward. Curtis over the left side, first down inside the 20. But Lafayette's been very good in the red zone this year. In fact, they're 10th in the country. 70% red zone. That's touchdowns this year. Very good mark, and they're looking to add to that total here. And this is where these tight ends come in handy. You get so much attention on Jamar Curtis in that run game. They like to run some pop passes down here. So keep an eye on number 89. They may try to slip him out off of some type of RPO or play action. It's a handoff for Curtis for a short gain up the middle. Let's talk about quarterback Dean DeNoble, a sophomore from Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Actually, his hometown very close to Nick Minicucci, the Delaware quarterback's hometown. Dean DeNoble is a walk-on. Now, we did a double take when the coach told us that yesterday. He is not a scholarship player, but he won the job in the preseason, and he's come out and played extremely well. We couldn't believe it. When Coach Trotter <laughs> said it on the call, we had to confirm it just because he's played so well. You very rarely see a starter be a walk-on, but that's just the credit to the culture that Coach Troxel has built here at Lafayette. Second team All-Patriot League selection this year. Throws out into the flat for Curtis. Turns the corner. Lafayette into the end zone for a touchdown. Jamar Curtis from 18 yards out, and it's 6 to nothing. I said it. The magic number is 25. Jamar Curtis has to get 25 touches somehow, some way. And it's not just the running game with him. It's receiving as well. They slip him out of the backfield, and he turns the corner. He ends up scoring right there. That is not the only time they're going to use him as a receiving threat out of the backfield. You're going to see a heavy dose of number 22 today in so many different ways, forms, and fashion. That's just one of the different or variation of ways that they can use Jamar Curtis. He's not just a running threat. He's a lethal weapon out of the backfield as well. Officially a 16-yard touchdown catch for Jamar Curtis, his second touchdown grab of the season. On for the extra point, Jack Simonetta, a freshman from Florida. Kick is up. Kick is good. Lafayette gets the stop defensively to start the game, marches right down the field. 16-yard touchdown pass to take a 7-0 lead here on the road at Delaware. Jamar Curtis. Once again, using him so many different ways out of the backfield. Big opportunity for Lafayette going up on a 7-0 lead on the road. Lafayette marches down the field on its first possession and scores a touchdown to take the early lead. A six-play, 58-yard drive took just over three minutes. And Jamar Curtis with the touchdown to finish it off. Lafayette led by head coach John Troxell. He is a Lafayette 1994 graduate in his second season and what a job he's done with the school on College Hill. 13 and nine his record with Lafayette. They were picked fourth in the preseason poll. They won four games last year. He takes them to their first Patriot League title in 10 years. Culture over scheme is something that he continued to preach it. Everybody kept saying they're a year ahead of where they intended as far as the schedule that he had for this team. And this team is loaded. They have a lot of young talent, and you saw that offense very early on. Townsend takes the kick from just outside the 10. Big hole up the middle, Jordan Townsend coming near side. Townsend, one man to beat, turns across midfield. Jordan Townsend in a foot race to the 30, to the 20. Just tripped up inside the five. Huge return, he stops at the one yard line. 
That's the big answer that Delaware needed right there. Jordan Townsend, a proven playmaker for this team in so many different ways. One of their better receivers on this offense, but he's dynamic as a kickoff return. It just fell short right there. That's one where a lot of guys are going to make fun of him in the film room, where you got to finish the play. You can't get stopped in the two-yard line right there. But that's a big return for the Blue Hills. 88-yard return for Townsend, his longest this season. He's second team all CAA as a return specialist. Now Delaware in business. First and goal from the one. Minakuchi with Yarns just behind him. Wildcat snap. Yarns up the right side. Burrowing his way forward. He stopped at the half yard line. Try to throw him off balance a little bit right there with the quick snap. The Wildcat going in, the quarterback going in the quick motion. And then Yarns going right up the middle. Marcus Yarns, a senior from Salisbury, Maryland, about 100 miles directly south of here. 14 touchdowns this season on the ground, which is tied for fourth in the country. Averages over seven yards a carry this season. He only needs about half a yard here. Wildcat snap again. He fumbled the ball. He picks it up. He comes near side. He's going to score. Marcus Yarns, just the way he drew it up at 7-6. <laughs> Plays don't always work out how you draw them up, right? I'm not sure about you and I, but I don't think they drew up that play like that for him to drop the ball, start 10 yards back, and then high step into the end zone. But once again, getting the ball in your playmaker's hands. They ran the Wildcat again right there, and that was a great, great play by Marcus Yarns, being able to recover it, get his eyes up, and still score and cross the goal line right there. You played. Are you allowed to high step after you fumble the ball like that? Uh, I think he is in the game, <laughs> but in, in the meeting room on Sunday, I, I think coach is going to say something about that. Alex Schmoke, one of two kickers that Delaware uses. His kick is up. It is good. Just like that, Delaware answers back with a two-play touchdown drive after the long kickoff return. Here we go. Eight and a half to go. First quarter tied at seven. Best start here in Delaware. Marcus Yarns takes an unconventional path to his 15th rushing touchdown of the season. Quick two-play, two-yard drive for head coach Ryan Carty. He is also an alumni of his uh, coach team that he coaches, Ryan Carty's class of 2006. He was the backup quarterback at Delaware, including on their national title team back in 2003. Has done an excellent job, led them to the FCS playoffs second round last year, 8-3 and three this year, although they did lose two of their last three games. When we asked Coach Troxel of Lafayette, what are the keys to this game? One of the two things he told us was special teams, the hidden yardage. That was not a hidden yardage. That was right out in the open. That 88-yard kickoff return basically tied the game. Yeah, and those are the type of plays you just can't give up. You take the momentum, especially early on. You take the air away in the stadium, and then you give up the big return and help their, this explosive Delaware offense end up being on, starting on the two-yard line. That's just putting a lot of pressure on your defense. The kickoff is a touchback, so Lafayette will start its second drive for head coach John Troxel at the 25-yard line. And first drive couldn't have gone much better. Yeah, you saw a mixture of everything. You saw a mixture of 12 personnel with the tight ends, Mason Gilbert, Dallas Holmes. We saw both of those guys incorporated in some way or form or fashion. But Jamar Curtis, he had four touches early on in that first drive, and it would surprise me if he exceeds that number on this second drive. They're going to ride their playmaker all the way to the end of this game. Sophomore quarterback Dean DeNoble with sophomore running back Jamar Curtis. Mason Gilbert, who was injured on that first drive, is not out there. Dallas Holmes is the tight end. He shifts to the left. Whistles before the snap. Our referee today is Derek Hatton from the MEAC. Delay game. Offense, number 16, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Not how you want to start your drive coming off the sideline. We may not be hearing from Derek Hatton a lot today. These are the, each team is the least penalized team in their conference. As you see, Lafayette, terrific season. First time they've had nine wins since 1981. Best conference record in 17 years. It's a handoff for Curtis. 
pushing his way forward over the left side, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. In fact, Delaware is fifth in the country and fewest penalties per game. Lafayette is sixth, so both teams very disciplined in that regard. And this is a credit to the culture that both of these coaches have built. Discipline, discipline, discipline. That's something that we, we, we heard each coach say at least five times during the call this week. Lafayette going with some tempo here, scored on its first drive on a Jamar Curtis touchdown catch from Dean DeNoble. He was the starting quarterback. Delayed handoff for Curtis, and he's dragged down from behind. They try to go with the draw play right there. They thought Delaware's defensive ends were going to get up the field, but they just maintained their gaps, and that's what this defense is all about, maintaining your gap. This three down, three safety look is something that the coaches have been preaching. Just maintain your gaps, especially with a short, shifty running back like Jamar Curtis. You have to maintain your gap. Keyshawn Hunter, number 55, with the tackle for loss. Here comes the pressure. Tenoble trying to get away, steps up in the pocket. Tenoble coming near side, throws into traffic, incomplete. Incomplete, broken up nicely there on the sideline by Nick Ware, a senior safety. Huge answer by the Delaware defense, getting them to go three and out. But that's one of the good things about Dean DeNoble's game is that he can run around and he can make some plays. So the defensive ends, they're going to have to be disciplined in their rush coming up the field. You can't rush up the field too much just because he's a quarterback that likes to get outside of the pocket and make some throws. But Delaware playing a lot of man coverage early on, saying my guys are better than your guys. And that's what they believe in this game. And I think that should continue as far as them looking to play man coverage to limit the RPO game. Senior Jacob Trestick is the Lafayette punter. He'll punt it to the dangerous Jordan Townsend. Short, wobbly kick. Townsend takes it and fair catches it at the 50, where Delaware will have excellent field position. We'll step aside for a quick timeout. Just past the midway point of the first quarter, tied at 7. Tied at 7 early. Jordan, let's take a look at some of your impact players in this game. And Jordan Townsend's already made an impact. Yeah, we've already saw what he was able to do on the big kick return that almost ended in a touchdown two yards away from breaking this game, or excuse me, breaking this game open for the, the Delaware Blue Hens. But Jordan Townsend, a dynamic wide receiver, they're 5'11", 197 pounds. He primarily plays in the slot, but they'd like to use him on the outside a little bit too. And Billy Schaefer for Lafayette, 20 and a half tackles for loss. Yeah, he just likes hitting people. That's what the <laughs> coaches said about him. 10 sacks, four forced fumbles, 76 tackles. He's all over the field. Expect to see number 21 making a lot of impact plays today. His head coach called him the best player in the Patriot League. He was first team all league this year. It is a handoff running over the left side, huge hole, and breaking tackles and finally driven down to the 39 yard line is Quincy Watson, a fifth year grad student. This offensive line is starting to settle in now. As we said in the opening, they average 309 pounds, while Lafayette's defensive line averages only 261 pounds. So they're going to continue to try to lean on this running game, especially now being down to their third quarterback. They're going to have to give them a heavy dose of the running game. Gain of 12 for Watson. Minakuchi hasn't been asked to do much so far. He'll hand it off for Watson. He runs over the left side where he's upended. Bryson Bright, sophomore with the tackle. It's a great job by Bright right there, keep it contained just because Watson tried to circle the defense right there, but he's responsible for keeping contained. You don't want him to get outside of the defense. So great job by keeping contained and keeping this offense inside. Excellent field position to start this drive for the Blue Hens. Facing a second down. Play action. Minakuchi rolls out right. Has a man running wide open down the middle of the field. Instead, he's hit as he throws. It's incomplete. Oh, man, he missed Joshua Youngblood running wide open right there. But that's something that you have to deal with, with a young quarterback being down to your third quarterback. Now, there's going to be some things that your normal starter, your second string, that he may not see just because the game's moving really fast for him right now. So that's why you see them trying to get him outside of the pocket a little bit so you can clear his vision up and try to slow the game down, give him some more time to throw. But, man, he missed Youngblood there mm. for a wide-open touchdown. You saw the tackle there by Marco Olivas, fifth-year senior from Fort Worth, Texas. His coaches called him the heart and soul of this team. Third down. 
Oh. Intercepted! Wow. It's a flexion. It's intercepted. He stepped out of bounds. Who's got it? It deflected off the receiver right to the Lafayette defender. Was he inbounds when he caught the ball? Intercepted. Wow. First down, Lafayette. What a crazy play there as the receiver bobbled the ball and, and it just went straight to Taylor Smallwood. It looks like the wide receiver was trying to run. The wide receiver, Chandler Harvin, right there, was trying to run a comeback. But Minicucci was trying to throw a curl. He kept throwing the ball upfield, and the receiver was breaking back towards the sideline. But just a miraculous play right there and a bad bounce for the offense. It tips right up to Tyler Smallwood for his second interception of the year. A sophomore from Sewanee, Georgia, northeast of Atlanta, Taylor Smallwood, the turnover. Uh, and again, a tough break there for Delaware. The pass was a little bit behind the receiver, but it deflected right into the cornerback's arms. You see that turnover margin for the season, and as always, such a huge factor in these games. It is, but Ryan Cardin knew this was coming. He understands the situation of the game. He said, we know Minicucci is going to make mistakes. We're not expecting him to go out and play perfect. So he just has to limit those turnovers. So he knew what was going to happen coming into the game. But this defense, they have to answer right here. You want to see this defense go three and out. But next time Delaware is on offense, I think they're going to hand the ball off a little bit more to Marcus Yarns just to try to settle the quarterback down a little bit. Since Lafayette went down the field on the first drive of the game, the Delaware defense has found its footing a bit. From the 25. DeNoble throws wide open. He's got it at midfield. Tiptoeing the sideline. He's out of bounds. Should have been a touchdown. Instead, it's Elijah Stewart for a big game. And that wasn't even an RPO. That was just a play action. But once the defense sees the ball go in the gut of excuse me, of Jamar Curtis, they're going to come down just because he occupies so much attention. And even in the secondary, it looks like a bust of coverage right there. The corner was expecting the safety to be over the top. The corner was in zone while the safety was in man coverage. Elijah Stewart gets a big play right there. 31 yard reception probably could have gone the distance instead into Delaware territory. DeNoble rolls out right, stops, goes up the middle. DeNoble's going to look to run, spinning his way forward and driven down after a gain of four. And this is what we talk about with DeNoble. He not only is a playmaker inside the pocket, but he's dynamic outside of it. If he doesn't like what he sees when he's scanning the field, the fir his first reaction is to tuck the ball and get what he can get just because he wants to keep the offense ahead of the sticks, which is exactly what he did right now, or right there. Now they're in a second and five situation. Still plenty of time on the play clock here. Lafayette moving the ball again, scored on its first drive of the game. And it's an RPO handoff. Curtis, big hole left side, and Jamar Curtis ankle tackled after picking up a first down. KT Say, a freshman safety, made the key open field stop. These linebackers are really in conflict right now. They don't know whether to pay attention to the passing game or come down in pursuit to Jamar Curtis. And that's what this offense is about. They want to keep these linebackers, these second and third level defenders in conflict. Tempo, DeNoble throws near side, wide open man caught inside the 25 and taken down close to the first down marker. Chris Carasia, a junior, his 29th catch of the season. And he had a big game last week, 68 yards and a touchdown against Lehigh. And it's not just Elijah Stewart in this offense. Carasia is a big part of what they want to do offensively. You're going to see quick curls. You're going to see slants. You're going to see out routes. They like to get the ball out really quick. And with the quarterback, Dean DeNoble, he's going to put the ball in the gut of Jamar Curtis, but sometimes it's play action or it's, it's, it's an obvious run, too. Lafayette runs the ball 64% of its plays, so roughly two to one run to pass. This is a run for Curtis up the middle for a first down to the 19. It's tough to get a beat on when Jamar Curtis is actually getting the ball. And like I keep going back to, every play, whether it's a pass or a run, they're going to give the illusion of putting the ball in the gut of Jamar Curtis. Sometimes it's a play action, sometimes it's an actual run. Well, it can be a changeup of an RPO, too. Curtis, 5'8", 165 pounds. They said it's hard to see him behind that line sometimes. That's the tough part for linebackers. You lose him, and then before you know it, he's coming out of the backfield right? for a 15 to 20 yard game. First and 10. Curtis scampers free for the touchdown. Jamar Curtis, second score of the game, 13 to 7. 
Offensive coordinator Tim DiMuzio is doing a good job of switching up his play call, and he has the second and third level defenders. Their head is spinning right now. They don't know whether to step down. They don't know whether to go back just because sometimes it's a play action, sometimes it's RPO, and then before you know it, he's handing the ball off to Jamar Curtis. So they're doing a good job of keeping these linebackers and also safeties second guessing. And before you know it, Jamar Curtis is coming out of the backfield getting a big gain, and he's so small behind that line of scrimmage, and he's so explosive, he's getting big gains already. Simonetta's kick is up, and it is good. Lafayette, an underdog in this game, is not intimidated. In fact, they're marching the ball up and down the field. Jamar Curtis's 13th touchdown run of the season. This one from 19 yards out. And they're just running right up the middle. It's just simple inside zone, but the linebackers and the safeties for Delaware, they're just not doing a good job of coming down and tackling right now. You have to be able to wrap up Jamar Curtis, and this is something that we talked about with the Delaware coaching staff this week and that they have to rally to the ball. The first person is usually not going to bring down Jamar Curtis just because he's so, so shifty and he's very dynamic. He's going to make that first person miss. So your ball pursuit and being able to get all hats or all hands on deck to the football, you have to be able to do that with Jamar Curtis just because he's so dynamic and he can make that first person miss. Curtis, one of 30 finalists for the Walter Payton Award, which goes to the top offensive player in FCS football. He was first team all league. Comes off another huge game against Lehigh last week, 166 yards, three touchdowns. Probably his banner performance of the season was in their huge win at Holy Cross, which essentially won them the Patriot League title. 229 yards and two scores. Darren Wu to kick it away again. Jordan Townsend back deep to receive inside the 10-yard line. They continue to kick it to Townsend. He'll take it on the run at the 14. Townsend coming near side, has space, and a nice job there by the cover man, Davis Oliver Goodwin, who keeps him from breaking free again. Might have been a touchdown saving mm. tackle right there. I'll be surprised if they continue to kick to Jordan Townsend, especially kicking into the wind. The ball's landing really at about the 15 to 20 yard line every single time. And yeah, they've got to stop kicking it to him. I mean, it's twice now that he's, once he almost scored, that one was about one tackler away from being another huge return. So Nick Minicucci back out. The freshman from Midland Park, New Jersey, making his first career start. He did start two years at Don Bosco Prep, but this, a different animal here today. He'll throw the lateral out to Joshua Youngblood, turning it upfield. Youngblood has some space out past the 35. Quick, easy completions. And that's the best way to treat a young quarterback. It's the best way to treat a young quarterback. Just going with a quick orbit motion and perimeter screen right there to Youngblood. Great job by the wide receivers. Wide receiver blocks down the field lead to long touchdowns. And it would surprise me if they come back to that play and throw a double pass. Mm. That would not surprise me at all. Townsend and Harvin, a good job blocking down the field. Gain of six, Yarns breaks the first tackle and then driven backwards a couple of yards short of the first down. We asked the head coach, Ryan Carty, about his quarterback, Nick Minicucci. He said, tell us a little about him. He said, he's got a live arm. He can make every throw. He's smart. He's tough. And he doesn't shy away from the big moments. When you play at a school like Don Bosco Prep, you're going to play in some big games. He played in those. He won those games. He just hadn't gotten a lot of reps this season. And he's played in big games, especially even though it's the high school level. He's played in big atmospheres. He played it in front of big crowds like this. But once again, he's got to get the offense going right. They're making some mental mistakes, turnovers and penalties, which is something that is uncharacteristic of this Blue Hens offense and even the team as a whole, as we talked about earlier, one of the least penalized teams in the FCS. You got the call there from Derek Hatton. False start against Delaware. I'll back him up five yards. Another thing Coach Cardi told us was BYOJ, bring your own juice. He said his team had to bring their own energy this week. This is a program that averages about 16,000 fans a game. This weekend traditionally never draws well. They're only expecting about four or 5,000 here today. Lafayette's got 1,000 fans on the other side, and they're in full throat. Delaware needs a spark. Minicucci steps up, throws over the middle, caught for a first down out past the 45, across midfield. A good gain to the 49-yard line, caught by Chandler Harvin. There's your little bit of a spark right there, just some positivity in the passing game, just showing that he can throw the ball down the field. And even though it was an intermediate gain, you need to provide some explosive plays. It can't just be the running game just because these linebackers are flying downhill right now. So you have to have some type of presence or threat in the passing game. It is a fresh set of downs into Lafayette territory. Final minute of the first quarter. 
All sorts of motion here. Reverse run for Yarns. He hits the hole hard. He fumbled the ball. Lafayette says they've got it at the 47. They do. Two turnovers for Delaware. Result of the play is the fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Lafayette. A nightmare start mm. for the Blue Hens offense. Turnovers, penalties, just, just things that are unca uncharacteristic of them as a whole. They went with kind of, of a reverse run right there where they had a convoy of blockers in the front, in front of Marcus Yarns right there, but a great job of looking to strip the ball. You want to be able to create turnovers. And once again, the player we talked about is an impact player, Billy Schaefer. He already has four, four, four forced fumbles this year. He adds a fifth right there. Number 21 reached in, looked like he punched the ball out. Another huge play. Darian Riley. Recovered it. Looked like Schaefer was in there first. Sekou White also helped create the fumble. Final 35 seconds of the first quarter. Denoble looking deep. Home run ball. He's got it. Lafayette touchdown. Just like that, Elijah Stewart. It's 20 to 7. Wow. Big play right there. And that's what offensive coordinators want to do. When you get a big turnover, it's called change of pace plays. Whenever you get those change of pace or change of momentum plays, the momentum's on your side. The head, the head coach, John Trox, so I'm, told, I'm sure he told him on the headset, let's take a shot down the field. And that's exactly what he did. Elijah Stewart originally started his career in the slot. And that's what offensive coordinator Tim DiMuzio said. He moves around. We move him around quite a bit. We play him in the slot. We play him in the outside. But he originally started his career in the slot. And you saw him catch, go for the big catch right there. 53-yard reception. The extra point is up and good. And this crowd here in Delaware is stunned. Lafayette exerting itself so far as Elijah Stewart wide open for the 53-yard score. Execution, execution, execution. That is what's happening with Lafayette in all phases right now. Outside of special teams, offense and defense, they're clicking on all cylinders right now, creating turnovers. They're executing plays in all phases of the game. But offense, they're doing a good job of executing as far as hitting guys down the field. But the offensive coordinator, TJ DiMuzio, is doing a good job of switching up his play calling. But I meant to say sudden change. That's what yeah. it, exactly what it's called. So when you have the momentum on your side, you have a sudden change play. With the turnover, the momentum is on your side. So the first thing in their mind is, let's take a shot down the field. The momentum's on their side. We've taken the air out of the stadium. The team on the other side is a little bit down. They're pouting a little bit as far as the turnover on that side of the ball. Let's take a shot down the field, and they end up executing right there. Stewart, a sophomore from Galloway, New Jersey, near Atlantic City, leads the team in receptions and yards and that was his fifth touchdown catch of the season 21 to 7 lafayette on the road this time they'll pop it up and the fair catch will be called for and made at the 25 which is where they'll start they finally stop kicking it to jordan townsend <laughs> we said it <laughs> we said that probably was going to be the last time that they kicked to townsend they saw the same thing that we saw he was one uh, he was one tackle away from actually housing the second right. kick return prior to this prior possession now, Delaware, particularly quarterback Nick Munakuchi, has not played poorly, but they've got to obviously stop turning the ball over. They intercepted two drives ago, fumbled on the last drive. This will probably be one of the final plays of the first quarter, looking for a good drive starter. Just have to get back to who they are. Just lean on the running game. You have success running the ball. They just have to take care of the ball, too. Minakuchi will throw over the right side. Tipped in the air, intercepted! Narayan Brown heading the other way. Brown inside the 30. Brown jumps over a man and tackled at the 21-yard line. Delaware disaster, three turnovers in a row. Just a miscommunication right there. Like the sun might have got in his eye or something. I can't really tell what happened. It was a good ball by the quarterback. Oh, put it right on the Minicucci receiver. right there. It was a good ball. They were just running a, a little like a bang eight right there, a quick slant, uh, a eight-step slant. It just like he just didn't see the ball. He lost it in the sun or something. It was hard to tell. It was Harvin, the intended receiver. It popped right up in the air. Now, Ryan Brown, a senior from Atlanta, his second interception of the season. Now a chance with just 12 seconds left in the first quarter. Lafayette could score again. They've already piled up 187 yards of offense. It's a sudden change play we talked about right here. Let's see if they take a shot right to the end zone right away. It's Curtis. 
Bouncing it outside to the right in the open field. Jamar Curtis inside the 10. Foot race to the corner and dragged out of bounds at the five yard line with three seconds to go in the first quarter. Getting the ball to your playmakers. Once again, you cannot overcommit to the box. You have to slow play Jamar Curtis just because he comes up to the line of scrimmage so slow, you have to maintain your gaps. End of the first quarter. All Lafayette, 203 yards of offense. Delaware has turned it over three times in a row. 15 minutes in the book. The visiting Leopards lead the Blue Hens 21 to seven. First round of the FCS championship. Surprising score to start the second quarter. Lafayette leads Delaware 21-7. Delaware has been a very strong program all time in the FCS playoffs. They've won 12 straight playoff home games going back to 2000. Included in that span was a win over Lafayette back in 2004. But this game has gotten off to a horrendous start for head coach Ryan Carty. His team has turned it over three times in the last seven offensive plays. And Lafayette's knocking on the doorstep again. It's a handoff for Curtis picking his way forward and drag down, flag down. Could be a face mask or a hold based on where the flag was thrown from. It stopped at the six yard line. And they're doing the exact things that they said they could not do mm. coming into this game, which was turn the football over and commit a lot of penalties. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 14. That penalty in force half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So first set of downs, and that'll only be about a three yard penalty. But as we said, three turnovers in that first quarter. They had a pass intercepted on kind of a fluke deflection. They ran five plays on their next drive, ended it with a fumble. The first play of the next drive was another interception that started this drive. Watch the tight ends right here, both of them. As you see, they come in motion right here. Wouldn't be surprising to see a pop pass right here. Denoble hands it off Curtis up the middle. Yeah, touchdown. Yeah, the <laughs> Third score of the game for Jamar Curtis, 27-7. I thought they possibly, with Curtis being a bit of a smaller running back, it gets a little tough, especially on those smaller running backs when you get in the red zone in those goal line situations. I thought they might could have went play action right there and targeted both, either one of the tight ends, but they ended up giving the ball to Curtis for the score. Big, big score for Lafayette right there. Jamar Curtis is having a big game. Three touchdowns already 30 seconds into the second quarter. Simonetta has been busy, the freshman kicker on for another extra point. That is up, and it is good. So just under 30 seconds into the second quarter, Lafayette 28, Delaware 7. You never know how the game's going to play out, but I don't think a lot of people in this stadium, including Lafayette, thought this was how the first quarter in 30 seconds was going to play out. Just because Delaware is making a lot of mistakes that we haven't seen them make this year, that turn the football over and commit a lot of penalties. And when you're on your third quarterback, you can't put him at a disadvantage of where he has to throw the ball now. Your identity is you want to lean on the running game and put the ball in the stomach of Marcus Johns. Now being down 21 points, you're putting a lot of pressure on your young quarterback just because you have to throw the ball to cut this deficit down before halftime. Still a long way to go, yes, before halftime, but got to get something positive going on offense here as John Troxell, the Lafayette coach, has to be thrilled with the game way this game has started. Jordan Townsend back deep to receive the kick of Darren Wu. And this Delaware crowd is stunned here in New York, Delaware. Another kickoff coming for Lafayette. They kind of popped up the last one to force a fair catch. This time they'll kick it away to Jordan Townsend at the eight yard line. Jordan Townsend on his feet to the 30. Jordan Townsend to the 40. Stop kicking, stop kicking Jordan Townsend <laughs> the ball. <laughs> Let's look at these turnovers. Yeah, we've seen with what's happened today. They get the early pick off a of miscommunication. The quarterback was throwing the ball a little bit uphill. The fumble by Marcus Arns. A great play by Billy Schaefer. And then another interception on the miscommunication. Just looks like he lost the ball in the sun right there. And the defensive back ends up getting the interception. But Narion Brown ends up getting 
his first interception of the season. So these turnovers is just something that we haven't seen from the Delaware offense, and they have to pick it up right here. Both those interceptions off the hands of receivers as Yarns is tripped up after a short game. After you played in North Carolina Central, you were a coach. What is the message from Ryan Carty, who's not only the head coach, but also the offensive coordinator? They just have to slow the game down for the quarterback. And they that may sound a little bit off, but you want to lean on your running back running game and your running back Marcus Jones. Let's just get back to our, our identity. Let's get back to who we are. And what you tell your team is one play at a time. We can't make up this deficit in one drive. Let's take it one play at a time and just focus on getting 13 points right here. Minakuchi gets away from one tackler looking downfield and he'll just run out of bounds and ended up being about a net zero there because he ran out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage but it'll set up a third and long you can't get behind the chains with the young quarterback once again we talk about putting a lot of pressure on his arm and his shoulder that's not what you want out this game and that wasn't their game plan going in because ryan carty said we want to be able to run the football even though he's a former quarterback right. himself he likes to throw the ball all, all over the yard but they're a flavor of the week offense whatever's working that week that's what they're going to go with and yes they have to throw the ball a little bit to make up this deficit but you want to be in situations where you're able to lean on this run game and get the ball to your best player desperate con for conversion here throws it up for grabs down the middle intercepted Sekou White headed the other way. Four consecutive turnovers. White in the open field, runs over a man. Sekou White spinning his way forward to the 32. This is just an epic meltdown here by Delaware as four turnovers already in the first half. You just can't lean on your young quarterback's arm. He just doesn't have any confidence right now. They have to be able to run the ball. Get the ball to your best player in Marcus Jarns. It's clear that the passing game is really struggling. And this is what we said coming in. You want to be able to lean on your running game, but they feel as if they have to pass the ball right now. And I don't feel as if they have to do that just because you have to figure out a way to calm him down. They have to figure out how to calm Nick Minicucci down right now just because his head is spinning a little bit. That was really the first of his three interceptions that was yeah. mainly on him. Yeah. The other two were deflected by the receivers. Meanwhile, Lafayette, after forcing its fourth turnover, is back on offense, first and 10 in plus territory from the 33. Delaware defense has got to step up here. Got one-on-one on one, uh, Elijah Stewart. It's Curtis. Ripped down for a loss. Good play there on the edge. And that's the kind of play Delaware needs more of. Has Hassan, Hassan Manning Jr. the tackle. Quarter. Yeah, just going back to the interception here, the receiver falls down and the quarterback's just pressing right there. You can't lob the ball up over the middle of the field. And once again, turnovers, you cannot commit them in a playoff game just because every play is so crucial in a playoff atmosphere like this. Delaware defense absolutely has to get a stop here. Coming up on 12 minutes to go and what's been a really poor first half of the Blue Hens offense, second down and long. It's DeNoble throwing near side, caught by Stewart. And he is close to the first down, maybe a couple yards short at the 26. And Stewart's dangerous. We call him a rat guy, run after catch. You have to be able to wrap him up just because he's one of those players that can turn a five-yard hitch or a five-yard stop into a 30, 40, even 50-yard gain. So a good job of them right there rallying to the ball. But expect them to continue to push the ball to Elijah Stewart, especially if they continue to play off coverage. Could be four down territory here. Third and three. Denobo under pressure. Throws the slant. Caught for a first down to the 20. Chris Caracia. A gain of about six in a first down. Just playmakers making plays right there. <laughs> it, the defender had a free hit to him. Denobo was just able to come out of it and make a play, throwing the ball to the quick slant. Tempo here from Lafayette. We asked the coaches about Denobo. He didn't play at all last year. They said he was a real pain on the scout team, breaking tackles, running around, slinging it. They said in spring ball, every time he was on the field, the ball would move down the field, and that went over into preseason as well and into the regular season and now the playoffs. First down, Curtis bounces it outside to the right and driven down at the 16-yard line, a gain of five. Once again, you have to slow play Jamar Curtis just because he has that Le'Veon Bell type of running style of where he just walks up to the line of scrimmage, but he takes advantage of defenses that commit really quickly to the first level, and before you know it, he's hitting it out of the side door. They did a good job of rallying to the ball right there and ended up bringing him down, but that's something to keep an eye on. You can't play fast to Jamar Curtis. You have to commit slow to him. 
Lafayette making its fifth all-time FCS playoff appearance throw is incomplete. Denoble now eight out of 10. That was only a second incompletion. Lafayette actually made it three years in a row back in 04 when they lost to Delaware, 05 App State, 06 UMass. Most recently a loss at New Hampshire in 2013. This was their eighth all-time Patriot League title, but first FCS playoff appearance in 10 years. Third down. See if Delaware can force a field goal attempt. It's cover zero right here, which means everybody's going to be blitzing the quarterback. He has to get the ball out quick. He has to, otherwise he's going to take a sack. Here they come. Screen Curtis couldn't make the grab. The pressure was on. If he makes that grab, he's out in the open field. And to Noble's a little gimpy going back to the sideline. It was a great play call. He just passed the ball a little bit high right there. It looks like the quarterback is a little, Denoble's shaking up a little bit right there. He kind of hobbled off to the sideline. So keep an eye on that as the game continues, especially with him being a dual threat, being able to take away that running ability. That's a big part of his game. It will, it will set up a field goal attempt for Jack Simonetta, 33 yards from the right hash. Simonetta this season, six out of nine field goals, but five out of six from inside of 40 yards. Good snap, hold, kick is up, plenty of distance. The kick is... No good. Could that be the break Delaware needs to get some momentum back? Simonetta misses the kick. Delaware back on offense, down by 21. Media time on the field. Lafayette leads Delaware early second quarter by 21. NCAA FCS championship coverage continues next weekend with second round coverage beginning Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Winner of this game moves on to take on number two seed Montana next Saturday night at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Both these schools hoping that will be them making the long trip out to Big Sky Country. Lafayette off to the quick start. Nick Minicucci, the third string quarterback, back out there, has thrown three interceptions in this game. The starter, Ryan O'Connor, who started most of the season, was hurt in the second quarter last week in their loss against Villanova. Backup Zach Marker came in on the next drive. He was hurt. He's out today as they hand it off to Yarns over the right side for a gain of about four. Minicucci had to come in. He threw for only 55 yards and a couple interceptions in that game. We talked about the bracket. Lafayette and Delaware fighting for the right to face Montana. The other side of this mini bracket will feature Furman against the winner of Chattanooga and Austin P. All eight games on the far left of that bracket are, start, are today from roughly 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock Eastern time. Minakuchi designed run over the left side. And a positive gain out to the 26, setting up a manageable third down. And this is the situation that Delaware wants their offense to be in just because you don't want to rely heavily on the passing game. You have you have had some struggles in that area. Let's get back to who we are. Our identity is to run the football, especially being down to our third quarterback. You have to rely heavily on the run game. The turnovers have all come in the passing game outside of one fumble, but let's get the ball to our best players. Delaware has turned it over four consecutive drives. Minakuchi with his palms up, unsure of the call timeout. Ryan Carty frustrated, calls a timeout, the head coach, timeout, and I think it's definitely the right move there, the just half. the first time out for Delaware this half. They'll get their signal straight in advance of third down. Timeout. Media. Key third down coming up for the Delaware Blue Hens. They trail Lafayette 28 to 7. This is the 29th all-time meeting between these two schools. Delaware has won 14 in a row going back to 1960. But in Lafayette's defense, only four of those games have been in the last 50 years. Most recently, Delaware 37-0 in 2018. Key third down here. Third down and four. Have to get it to the 30-yard line as Delaware desperately looking to get something going on offense. They've turned it over on four consecutive drives. Minakuchi shotgun snap. Has time, now flushed out of the pocket to the left, trying to get away. Still on his feet, and he's gonna be taken out of bounds. Loss of a couple of yards in the play, they'll be forced to punt. Just there's nowhere to go with the ball right there. They tried to throw some underneath routes, a quick whip route. 
to Jordan Towns, and that's where he was looking to go. But the Leopard defense was all over it. This defense is flying around right now. This is actually the first time Delaware has punted in this game. So they've turned the ball over so much they haven't punted. Ryan Cost is one of the best in the league. Transferred from Monmouth, now a three-time all-conference selection, averaging 44 yards per punt. Back deep to receive Gabe Dubois. Cost, low wobbly kick, bounces at the 40. Dubois takes it on one hop at the 33, picking his way over to the right side. Dubois jumps over a man and tackled. Hey, yeah, fumbled the ball out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 25, Gabe Dubois. Where Lafayette will start first and 10. Delaware forced a missed field goal on the short field on their last defensive drive. So the Delaware defense trying to pick up some momentum and ideally forcing a turnover of yeah, their own. I was just about to say that, Robert. They well, need a turnover right here. They need to flip some type of momentum into their favor, and they have to create extra possessions for themselves. A defensive touchdown, special teams touchdown. They got to get some cheap, easy touchdowns or a turnover of some sort. The bad news is Lafayette is one of the best in the country at limiting turnovers, 12th in the country, only 10 turnovers in 11 games this season offensively. In large part because of sophomore quarterback Dean DeNoble, a walk-on. Takes the shotgun snap and hands it off for Curtis. Bouncing it outside to the left, Curtis into the secondary. Tumbles forward to the 49, a gain of eight. I keep saying it, they keep over committing to the box with Jamar Curtis. You have to slow play Curtis just because he wants to suck you into that first level into the box. And before you know it, he's going to bounce it outside. That's what you have to do with this type of runner. Call it eight yards on the play, just shy of midfield. Curtis again, first down, picking his way forward. Gain of about 10 for Jamar Curtis, who's getting close to 100 yards already. I want to show the big ugly some love right there. Mm. That was a huge block by Ryan Langsdale, the left tackle, tone setter and physical guy, former defensive lineman, switched over to the offensive side of the football prior to the 2022 season. He had a tremendous block right there that just caved in the left side and allowed Jamar Curtis to hit it outside on the left side right there. Number 68, Langsdale, second team All-Patriot League, also a former walk-on, earned a scholarship this season. First and 10, Curtis again. This time stopped after a short gain. Host of tacklers there, including Dylan Schrainer. One player we haven't heard from yet for Delaware, Kind of their man in the middle, Jackson Taylor, number zero, hasn't been a factor. He has not, and he came from a Division II school, Westchester, and they were really excited about him coming into fall camp, and he's proven to be everything that they thought he was coming in from the transport portal. 97 tackles, 11 and a half tackles for loss, and three and a half sacks. We have to see him pop a little bit more in this game just because the running game has already been established by Lafayette. So look for Taylor to be a little bit more involved as this game goes along. Low snap, DeNoble throws it into the flat. It is caught for a moderate gain to Chris Caracia. will set up a third down. You talked about Jackson Taylor, first team all league, three-time first team all conference at Westchester, a Division II school. Somebody's got to step up, make a negative play here. A negative for Lafayette, a positive for the Delaware defense. Although probably too far to attempt a field goal from here. Could be four down territory. I absolutely agree. I think this is four down territory. Already past the midway point of the second quarter. It's a handoff for Taylor. And he is swallowed up. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. It'll set up a fourth down and about four. Much better job by, by the Blue Hand defense Jackson right there. Taylor They're not committing. That is what Jamar Curtis wants you to do. He wants to slow play you and lull you into influencing you into the box, and he wants to hit it outside. So they're being more patient. They're maintaining their gaps, and they're just staying in their lanes. That was a great job on their third down play right there. This Blue Hand crowd trying to summon some noise for their defense here on fourth down at four. Coming up on five minutes to go first half. Lafayette has come out and punched Delaware right in the mouth with a 28-7 lead. Blue Hens D looking for a stop. Here comes the pressure. 
to Noble throws. It is caught in a sliding grab for a first down by Carson Persing at the 30-yard line. This offense is dialed in right there. And you saw they went with the stack formation. The stack formation, the Blue Hen defense was trying to play man coverage. So the stack formation forces them to communicate. And they ran a switch route right there, which forces them to communicate. And they weren't able to do it on time. So now Lafayette can run some more time off the clock. Lafayette gets the ball to start the second half as well. They won the toss and deferred to start the game. So could really put a hammer lock on this game with another score as it's Curtis bursting over the left side. Curtis breaks into the open field and he's tackled at the 20. There is a flag down in the offensive backfield. I think we're going to get a hold by the center, Mike Barr. Holding, offense, number 62, 10-yard penalty, remains first down. You called it, Jordan, Captain Mike Barr, a senior from Havertown, Pennsylvania, first team, all Patriot League, a three-year starter. Just have to keep those hands inside, and you can't bring them down to the ground. Once the ref sees those hands outside and the defensive lineman trying to reach outside to make a tackle, and then you bring them down to the ground, that's going to be a magnet that's going to bring uh, holding a holding call immediately to the officiate, officials attention excuse me wipes out what would have been about a 10 yard run instead first and long they'll try it again with Curtis breaking tackles in the interior and gets about seven yards back it's just hard to find him behind He's the line of watch. scrimmage he definitely is fun to watch he kind of has a little bit of Darren Sproles mm. to his game and, you know, Darren Sproles was a very successful running back in the NFL. He was a great player at Kansas State, but he's just so competitive as a smaller runner. But those smaller runners, they're just hard to find in the first level. Before you know it, they're squeaking out of the backfield for big gains. His offensive coordinator, T.J. Demuzio, said he was not very highly recruited, but everyone who coached high school around him in the Maryland area said, you got to take a look at this kid, and they're glad they did, as DeNoble picks up about three. He's from Waldorf, Maryland, south of Washington, D.C., Jamar Curtis. Tough, shifty, as you said, hard to find. They said he's a good pass blocker, too. He is. He's very competitive. He's not your normal type of smaller running like back where he just type. wants to bounce everything thing to the outside. He can run between the tackles, and we saw that already today. They have no problems running him inside. He's a super threat outside on the perimeter, and he's dynamic as a receiver, too. Delaware D trying to bring their own juice here, third down and long. Tenoble pulls it down, pressure's on. He is sacked. He is sacked from the backside. The Blue Hens D comes up with the stop. It is Chase McGowan, the defensive end, leads the teams his six sacks of the season. Man, did they need that. They needed some type of positivity and something to change the momentum. Delaware, this is the second charge timeout. They wisely call a timeout here to save some time with just 2.24 left to go in the half. Reset the game clock to two minutes, 26 seconds. Reset the game clock. Tack on a couple more seconds. We'll step aside, be back to the end of the first half with Lafayette up 28-7. Divided loyalties amongst that group of fans with Lafayette leading it by 21. Stay with us here at halftime. It's a tribute of the great, one of the great traditions in all of college football. Lee Corso's headgear pick. We'll also update scores from around the FCS playoffs. Jordan and I will break down the first half that's coming up at the half, which is in officially 2 minutes 26 seconds. Delaware used its second timeout. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and 15. You always have to look for possibly a quick kick here. They are not lining up in punt formation. So it could be a quick kick. Fourth and 15, they've got to get to the 20. The quarterback backs up, and he will quick kick it into the far corner. And it's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback. So a good thought, but it only nets about 15 yards uh, as the quick kick rolls into the end zone. We'll take one more timeout with just over two minutes left to go in the first half. The hometown Blue Hens looking to gather some sort of positive momentum going into the locker room with 2.18 left to go in the first half. Robert Lee, Jordan Reed, our entire terrific ESPN crew with you from Newark, Delaware, where the visitors from Lafayette 
have jumped out to a 28-7 lead. If you just joined us, Delaware is playing its third string quarterback, number four, Nick Minicucci, after their top two quarterbacks got hurt last week against Villanova. Delaware has turned it over four times in the first half, but a good opportunity here to go into the half with some momentum. You want to get points where there's a field goal or a touchdown. You do not want to turn the football over right here, especially not getting the ball coming out of halftime. Lafayette will receive the second half kickoff. Good throw to the far side, caught for a first down by Joshua Youngblood. Strong throw there by Minicucci. Tough throw. Talking about a throw from the opposite hash, throwing a deep out on the sideline. We call those big boy throws. You get mm. paid a lot of money if you can make those mm. consistently. That's a big time throw right there by the quarterback, Minicucci. Threw that ball about 25 yards on a line out to the 31 yard line. They stop the play here. Delaware has one timeout left. Lafayette has all three. Delaware also has two field goal kickers they rotate in. Nate Reed has been taking most of the field goals lately. He's got a strong leg. Minacucci protected well. A lot of time. Flushed out of the pocket. A lot of room to run. Minacucci's going to pull it down to the 35 and darts forward close to the 40 yard line. And he's out of bounds right at about the first down marker. It's positive yardage. That's what you want out of this drive. Just stay ahead of the chains. Once again, getting the first down. Great job by the offensive line, giving him some time. Didn't see anything that he liked. He has great instincts of when he wants to touch the ball and run. Continue to stay ahead of the chains and gets a brand new set of downs. It is enough for a first down. He got out to the 41. Back-to-back -back first downs. Minacucci. Pressure coming off the edge, throws over the middle, wide open, incomplete. Incomplete intended for Youngblood. He puts that on the money. Youngblood's got a lot of room ahead of him. He does. They brought a safety blitz from the slot, and he saw it just a second late. If you saw it a second earlier, Youngblood probably would have been bumping his head mm. in the end zone field goal post right now, scoring a touchdown. He was running wide open down the middle of the field. Mm. Just out of reach. Just missed him. Joshua Youngblood, fifth-year grad student, started his career at Kansas State, then transferred to Rutgers, playing his final season at Delaware. Minacucci takes the snap, protected well again, steps up in the pocket, throws to the far side, incomplete. Intended for Youngblood again, tough pass there, a little bit too far. Just had too much air under. He's got to put a little bit more zip. He had his receiver right there open. He had a touch throw, but just trying to put a little bit too much air on it. The offensive line is doing a terrific job of protecting them, giving them some time on this drive. I think the defensive coordinator here, Mike St. Germain, might try to heat him up a little bit. He doesn't like seeing how much time he's getting back in the pocket, so it wouldn't be surprising to see him start to heat him up and bring some more blitzes. St. Germain, you mentioned the defensive coordinator. He's a Lafayette grad as well, 2007 was an All-Patriot League offensive lineman. They rush four. Minacucci pulls it down, hesitates. Now he's over the line of scrimmage. He's got to get across midfield. He does! Nick Minacucci, a first down to the 45. Gain of 15 yards, first and 10. Positive yardage. Stay ahead of the chains. And still plenty of time left here. A minute 20 or so to go. Plenty of time, no need to rush. Still have one timeout remaining. Minacucci starting to hit his stride. Steps up, he's going to look to run again, and he's going to be tackled from behind after a gain of maybe a yard or two. Now, still plenty of time coming up on one minute remaining. No need to rush here. And those short runs are okay. Yep. Just stay ahead of the chains. Even though the time is moving, they got to speed up a little bit here just because time is getting shorter. Just stay ahead of the sticks. Throws far side. It is caught by Jordan Townsend, and he goes out of bounds to stop the clock just shy of the 35-yard line. This is a good drive. Mm. And sometimes once you get low as far as the clock and time. Timeout, Lafayette. That's the first charge timeout. Lafayette's defense on its heels a little bit. They call it their first timeout. Keep in mind, Delaware's only scoring drive was set up by an 88-yard punt return. It was a two-yard scoring drive. So they have not moved the ball like this the entire game. They have not, but once you get low on time or you get in two-minute mode, it creates a sense of urgency, and that's what we're seeing here from this offense. So a good drive here for Lafayette, or for Delaware, I should say, and head coach Ryan Carty, see him in the white hat. We asked him about 
what is it like being the head coach of your alma mater? I mean, this place means so much to him, and he, he really had a great answer. He said, you know, I get chills. I mean, he started getting a little choked up telling us about it. You know, he doesn't think about it a lot, but this is really his dream job. He puts so much pressure on himself to make this place what he thinks it could and should be. They were a top 10 team for most of the year. There's nothing like leading your alma mater into places that they have never been under your construction. Just seeing his dream come to fruition, seeing his team take on his identity. He just has to pinch himself sometimes. Mm. He can't believe he's in the situation that he's in. Had a great run as an offensive coordinator at Sam Houston State, won the national title there. Play action, Minakuchi gets away from one man, throws down the middle, up for grabs, caught for the touchdown! touchdown. Joshua Youngblood, huge score for the Blue Hands! Wow, man, did they need that right there, especially coming, going into halftime. A shot play off of play action, a great design by Ryan Cardi. Just getting your best player to the opposite hash. He gets behind the defense, something that we haven't seen this offense be able to do so far in this game. Joshua Youngblood flies past the coverage right there for a big-time score. Alex Schmoke, one of two kickers that Delaware uses, is on for the extra point. Smoke 26 out of 26 on point afters this season. High snap, kick is up. Kick hits the upright, and Alex, I am sorry. He jinxed him. Jinxed him. 26 of 27 now. He missed the extra point. It only happens when you mention it, right? Uh, that's the way it goes. 28-13, Joshua Youngblood, his team-leading seventh touchdown catch of the season. What a shot in the arm for Delaware. They needed that so, so badly. And this offense did not have any type of energy or life prior to this drive. But those two-minute situations, they create a sense of urgency. Everybody's in hurry-up mode. And then you're so starved for points. And Ryan Cardi, I love the design right there. Once again, getting the ball in your playmaker's hands, just taking a shot down the field. But that was most important for the quarterback just because it shows that you can do this. And mm. it gives him confidence. Now let's regroup. Let's go into halftime and let's just come out of the, the locker room and just take it one drive at a time and cut this deficit down and hope to tie it coming out of the locker room. Third touchdown pass of Minakuchi's young career, young blood from 36 yards out. It caps an eight play, 80 yard drive, took a minute 40. What a confidence boost for that young man, Nick Minakuchi. Kick is away, fair catch called for and made. We'll put it out at the 25 yard line. So now Lafayette has seen the lead cut to 15. There's 38 seconds left to go in the first half. They have two timeouts, so we'll see how aggressive the offensive coordinator TJ Demuzio is here. This will be really interesting just because they do have some time. 38 seconds is a lot of time with two timeouts. Do they get aggressive and try to go down the field or knowing that they're getting the ball coming out of the locker room, do they just take a knee? Which is what it looks like they will do. They will play a conservative and take a knee here. And they should only have to do that one time to send us to the end of the first half. So barring a timeout, that's going to be the end of the first half. It was dominated by Lafayette. They will receive the second half kickoff, but Delaware with the momentum going into the locker room despite turning it over four consecutive possessions in the first half and seeing Jamar Curtis score three touchdowns for Lafayette, 28-13 the score after 30 minutes. Yeah, and Delaware did a lot of uncharacteristic things, three turnovers, and then also a bunch of penalties. And with this Delaware offense, they had a bit of a sigh of relief, that last uh, end zone scoring drive right there. That was huge for them. They needed that going into halftime. But this is going to be an interesting game coming out of the locker room. Halftime show is coming up. Lafayette 28, Delaware 13, first round of the FCS championship. Winner moves on to face Montana next week in Missoula and Big Sky Country. Four turnovers for Delaware in the first half, but down by 15 going into the locker room. Lafayette by 15. Halftime here in New York, Delaware. FCS championship first round between Lafayette and Delaware. College football is full of traditions, and for the past 27 years, Lee Corso has had one of his own. 
as Coach made his 400th headgear pick on college game day earlier this season. We take a look back at the history of his headgear. When Elsie puts on the headgear every Saturday morning, that is the moment when the day of football can start. Could have never have, have dreamt that it would have become where we are today, where fans every week, that's what they wait for, to see which headgear he's gonna put on. I like Ohio State's speed and power, but I question their place kicker and their punter. The headgear tradition started in 1996 at Ohio State. Herb Street was fairly new on the show, and Kirk's wife, Allison, had been an Ohio State cheerleader. He thought I might have some kind of in to try to get Brutus his headgear. They had to do some very high-level tense negotiations. I'm telling you, it took three or four different back and forths until finally they green-lighted Brutus. I'm telling you one thing. <laughs> Let's just examine the Brutus head. It's a head representing a nut, a two-tone nut. Oh. I like the fuck guys. So it's ridiculous looking. You can't help but laugh. Hey, 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 hey. And when he sensed that that was an entertaining moment that resonated with fans across the sport, he embraced it and it's become a beloved tradition. Colorado in a big upset. I remember him. As a young kid watching college game day and Lee Corso was on there and putting on the headgear. He is college game day. I feel like I've been watching Lee Corso do that since you know I was in high school. The different antics he's used and mascots he's used has been pretty incredible. Fire wolf costume, purple cow! Cows! To this day I still watch and anticipate to see what he's gonna do. Go Navy! Beat Army! Seeing him fire off the guns is pretty funny. My favorite one, we're at Texas, and McConaughey starts wrestling the LSU Tiger head off of LC. There was a little trickle of blood. Katy Perry was incredible. Like, she damn near broke my man's nose, taking the mask I had off of him. I think the, the, the best one might be the, the outtakes. How can you pick against that super? Throwing out some, some words that might, might needed to be edited. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite memories definitely include live animals. Man, we got a live duck on the set. He's not afraid of gamecocks. <laughs> He's not afraid of alligators. <laughs> He's not afraid of dogs of any kind. That dog <laughs> is beautiful. That dog is ugly. Give me this thing here. I think the best part is when Coach does the okie doke, where he grabs one head, gets ready to put it on and then he chucks it to the side and grabs the other one. I'm going with sweet old Alabama. <laughs> Anytime I'm watching and you don't know, you know, which, what he's gonna pick up, that, that's all pretty exciting. Penn State, give him that head. Does that mean you're gonna go against your first love, Brutus? Coach Corso is a maestro of the crowd. He can take them on a ride like not many people in the history of television can. Corso <laughs> with the duck. He's always got something ready for the people. And to see him come out as Ben Franklin was just absolutely incredible. I found it, Ben. This is my school. My best moment is when he picked Texas to win the national championship. Tonight, they shot the entire universe. And all the other guys up there were totally against him. I'm going with Texas Longhorns. Hook up, Texas! <laughs> and then we won. And I've praised Coach for that ever since. There's a time with Bill Murray. We're at Death Valley at Florida State. <laughs> and he comes up, Chief Osceola, and he's dancing, and he's dancing. Oh! Bill Murray sees that, and he picked Clemson, and he picks him up. It's a take down. It's a take down. WWE style. <laughs> it's chaos everywhere. Somebody that tried to copy that would be like, it would be silly. There's only one person that can do that, Lee Corso. I think he's been a great ambassador for college football and 
has brought some great perspective, but also brought laughs and fun to a game that we have to remember is still supposed to be fun and supposed to be a game. What he's provided to so many households, what he's provided to so many of us as coaches, he put a lot of fun in the game. I just can't thank him enough. <laughs> For Lee Corso to put on that headgear 400 times, it never gets old. Roll Tide! It's sincere, it's authentic, it's genuine, it embraces the fans, it embraces the tradition of what makes this sport unlike any other and what makes Lee Corso a college football broadcaster, an icon that's unlike any other who's ever been involved with this sport. And God bless the United States of America! <laughs> The fact that I've got a chance to sit next to you all these years and watch you do your thing and just learn from you, it just taught me so much about this industry, watching you perform in, in the way you did it. There he is. Hey, the Kirk Herbstreit Show. We love you so much. You're a piece of gold that we cherish every single week. campus here in New Ark, Delaware, where we're at the half. Lafayette leads Delaware 28-13. These fans have bundled up on a mid-40 degree temperature day here in the first state. Robert Lee and former North Carolina Central quarterback Jordan Reed back with you. Jordan, the all-time completion percentage leader at NC Central. They're playing Richmond today in the FCS playoffs. The name of the game in the first half, turnovers. Delaware turned it over four consecutive possessions. They've rallied back to within 15, but that was the story of the first half. It was. Turnovers and execution, and we saw Delaware turn the ball over three times, which is something we said they cannot do that, especially playing with your third quarterback of the season. You have to be able to take care of the football and lean on this running game. Let's take a look at that first half highlights, and we mentioned those turnovers. It was an epidemic there for some time. It was, and it came in the passing game and the running game. The first one came on a pass, and they just were, there just was miscommunication right there, and the Leopard defense ended up taking advantage of it, and they got the ball immediately to Jamar Curtis. We talked about in the pregame, 25 touches was the magic number, already up to 20 right. at halftime. It wouldn't surprise me if he seed that number on the next drive, and then the turnovers continued for the Delaware offense. And then right after, they had a sudden change play, and they get the ball to their playmakers and Elijah Stewart, a big play down the field. They've been clicking on all cylinders so far in this one. And then once again, turnovers have been the name of the game. And this opportunistic defense once again did it, getting interceptions and then getting the ball to Jamar Curtis right away. Jamar Curtis, 18 carries, 91 yards in that first half. You see the total yards in favor of Lafayette, but those four turnovers for Delaware, the key, they've got to clean that up, obviously, in the second half. 28-13 is the score at the half. We're back with more on the Halftime Show right after this. First round of the FCS Championship here in New Newark, Delaware. Beautiful afternoon for football in late November. Set to start the second half. Lafayette 28, Delaware 13. This game, one of eight games going on around the country today in the first round of the FCS Championship. Seven of them in progress. The scores, North Dakota leading a shootout with Sac State. You see some of the other scores in the first and second quarter. Jordan's NC Central team up on Richmond on the road at the half. Of note, North Dakota State just scored to take the lead on Drake. Drake is a non-scholarship program. They were a 41-point underdog today. They were leading 3-0 in that game, which is noteworthy to me. Yeah, it definitely is. And you North know, Dakota State is a, a perennial yeah, they power. They are a perennial power. They've won multiple national titles in years past, but it's playoff time. You never know yep. what can happen around the country. So none of these scores surprise me, and then the end result of any would not be surprising either. The huge favorite in the FCS playoffs, if you're just jumping in at this point, is South Dakota State, the defending champion. They're undefeated. They were the number one seed again this year. They rolled through their regular season. They are the number one seed. The winner of this game that we're watching, Lafayette and Delaware, will face the number two seed, Montana, which got off to a slow start this year, caught fire at the end of the year, crushed their rival, Montana State, in the Brawl of the Wild last week. That game will be at 9 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday in Missoula. Delaware kicks off to start the second half. Fair catch called for. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. This was the bracket that we just talked about. This is one half of the bracket. 24 teams make the playoffs. Eight of them get 
a first round by the top eight seeds. So Montana got the number two seed. They will face the winner of this game that we're doing right here in the second round next Saturday, nine o'clock. Let's look at the other side of the bracket. South Dakota State, we talked about two Coastal Athletic Association teams, Villanova and U Albany got seeds. The CAA, the home of Delaware football. Lafayette, though, leads it by 15 to start the second half. Robert Lee, Jordan Reed, our entire crew with you from Newark, Delaware. Lafayette with the ball and a 15-point lead. Pressure's on. Denoble gets away, throws it to the near side, incomplete, as they had four receivers stacked at the bottom of your screen. Coming in with a little bit of a changeup and something There's that no Delaware foul, showed. Is in the area. Something that Delaware showed on tape is whenever you go empty formation or the offense does not have any back in the backfield, they're not just going to let the quarterback sit there and dictate the tempo. They're going to blitz you. They're going to heat the quarterback up. So what you saw was right right there was they bought a six-man pressure. So there's one extra person that they cannot block. Denoble in that first half, 10 out of 13, 164 yards, two scores, no interceptions. Curtis had 91 yards rushing and two touchdowns on the ground, one through the air. This is Curtis. And dragged down by Ty Davis, a safety. And set up a third down. And if Delaware, ifs, 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 gets a three and out to start this second half, gets the ball right back, they scored last in the first half. You see the story of that first half. Four Delaware turnovers on four consecutive possessions led to 21 Lafayette points. Delaware did score just before halftime to cut the lead to two touchdowns. Pressure's on, off the edge, Denoble smoked. Here's the ball, it's fumbled, it's recovered by the Blue Hands. Big pressure off the edge by Chase McGowan. It's recovered by Dylan Trainer. You know, we talked about momentum changing plays right there. Number 12, Chase McGowan, he had a big sack in the first half. He comes back and makes a big play. He comes back and makes a big play on the first drive of the second half. And this is what we talked about, going into the half, taking the momentum into the locker room. This is the type of play that they needed, but this is going to be interesting right here. They end up calling it a fumble, but it may be under review. Yeah, it'll be interesting, you know, is it possible his arm was going forward? They're going to continue the play. They will say it was it. a fumble. Yeah. His arm okay. was not coming forward. Okay. So now Delaware in business. Best starting field position of the day other than that long kickoff return. 23-yard line, early second half, down by 15. A lot of time to go in this game. And they finally got the offense going at the end of the exactly, second quarter. Exactly what they needed. And once again, this is another one of those sudden change moments. Mm -hmm. Now that they have the momentum, Let's see if they do a pass or they give the ball to Marcus Jones. Blitz is on. Throw into the flat. Caught by Townsend trying to make a man miss. Darts to the middle of the field. Townsend running to the far corner and upended at the six yard line. Gains 17 in a Delaware first down. Feel the momentum sh mm. slowly shifting back into the favor of the Blue Hands. Getting the ball into the playmaker's hands. Jordan Townsend has showed up offensively and on special teams. Townsend, a grad student from Farrell, Pennsylvania, near Youngstown, Ohio, leads the team in catches and yards coming in. Yarns to the right of Minicucci, first and goal from the seven. Minicucci has time, lobs it near corner. Harvin couldn't make the catch, it's incomplete. Just trying to take advantage of a one-on-one -on -one situation to Harvin. It was a really good throw, he just wasn't able to bring it in. And those fade balls down in the red zone are so tough mm. just because everything has to go perfect. The placement has to be perfect. The receiver has to get his feet in. There's so many things that have to go perfect, but I love them trying to go for it right there. Marcus Yarns was quiet in the first half. Nine carries, 26 yards, and a short touchdown. Minakuchi was 5 out of 12 for 85 yards and a score. Three interceptions, full house backfield, and it's going nowhere as Yarns is taken down. I didn't really like that play call just because you're playing into the favor of Lafayette's defense. Keep them spread out. You've done a good job of running the ball, but don't bring everybody into a condensed set. Whenever you go into that full house formation, everybody in the stadium knows who you're giving the ball to. And that's number 21, Marcus Jones. I didn't really like the play call right there. I think they need to keep them spread out and get the ball to Jordan Townsend or Yarns in some way, form, or fashion, but don't condense everybody into one set. Keep them spread out. Crazy formation there. Now they motion into a regular set. Townsend in motion, third and goal. Minicucci 
looking right, throws it into the flat. Caught by Watson, needs to make a man miss. Spins forward to the seven yard line and Delaware will face a fourth and goal. May need to kick a field goal here. It's fourth and goal from the seven. I don't think they're gonna go for it here. It's a lot of time to go in this game. 12 and a half minutes remaining. Delaware is going to go for the touchdown here, it appears. Yeah, interesting play call right here. But maybe what he's thinking is he wants to cut it to a one possession game. If you kick a field goal, no matter what, it's still going to be a two possession game. Delaware is going to go for it. Watson in there at running back. Townsend to the bottom of your screen. Fourth down and goal from the seven. Big play. Shotgun snap. Minakuchi looking left, throws the fade for the tight end. He's wrapped up. It's incomplete. Oh, the flag. There's the flag. The flag came from the official near the goal post. Clear pass interference there against Braden Bros, the intended receiver. I mean, that obvious call there. He got there a little early, a second too early. This will be interesting decision. It's a long discussion. Pass interference. Defense number two. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Take another look at it. And that's a big changer right there. And the penalty ended up being on number 20, Tyler Smallwood, right there. So now it goes from potentially Lafayette getting the ball mm. and having to drive the distance to now the Blue Hens getting a fresh set of downs and the ball on the two yard line. Completely from my changes viewpoint, the game. an obvious yeah. penalty. He was there about a second early, wrapped up the receiver. Fresh set of downs, first and goal. Minakuchi keeping. He'll be wrapped up and stopped for a loss. Good defense there by Lafayette. Once again, you're condensing everybody inside and you're squeezing everybody into a formation. It puts so much stress on everything to go right. I would like to keep everybody spread out here and get the ball to Marcus Yarns. Give him the number 21. He's your best player on the field or Jordan Townsend. Find 17 or 21. Those are your two best players. I didn't like the power read call right there trying to get the quarterback going downhill. Preston Forney, senior from the Dallas area, tackle for loss. So this will be the sixth play that Delaware has run on this series inside the 10-yard line. Minakuchi throws the bullet pass near side, incomplete. He was out of bounds. Intended for Harvin as they continue to bang their heads into the wall here. This will be the seventh play from inside an and goal situation. And Yarns isn't even on the field, which I'm really, really surprised by by that decision. They're putting so much pressure on their passing game for everything to go right. Find, find 17 and 21, and neither one of those players are on the field. I'm really, really surprised by that. Youngblood, the receiver to the right, Harvin to the left, third and goal. Watson, the running back. Handoff for Watson. He gets to about the three now. Fourth and goal from the three. You already went for it from the seven, oh, yeah. but you've run seven straight plays from the seven yard line and in and have been unable to get into the end zone. They're going to go for it on fourth down. There's no difference between this fourth down call and the previous one. Once again, if he kicks the field goal, it's a 12 point game and they make it, it's still a two possession game. But if they get a touchdown here, it's potentially a one possession game. So I think Ryan Cardi's just playing the probability right here and just make, he wants to make this a one possession game. Lafayette looking for the huge defensive stand. Pistol set. Man in motion, Youngblood. Oh, they blew the play up. Youngblood's in trouble. He can't forward pass it. Oh. Is this a double forward pass? I don't know. I thought the first one was yeah, a forward pass. It's going nowhere. Yeah. It's a penalty. Elijah Sessoms ended up catching it at the seven, but it's going to be two forward passes. Elijah Sessoms, flag of the play. Should be a legal forward pass. They'll decline the penalty. Derek Hatton, the official. Oh, 
illegal forward pass, second forward pass of the down against the offense. Lost the down on the play. It'll be Lafayette's ball, first down. Five yards from the spot of the foul, first down, Lafayette. Ugly sequence for Delaware on the and goal situation. They run eight place and goal, do not score. The score remains 28-13, Lafayette. Ryan Carty rolling the dice there, going forward on fourth and goal twice, foregoing what would have likely been a chip shot field goal. The score remains 28-13, so Lafayette turned it over. They do not pay for it defensively. Yeah, I was surprised to see the play call in there, especially not having Yarns or Townsend on the field. That just didn't make a lot of Correct. sense to me. The second four pass of the down was made from the 21-yard line. It will be enforced five yards to the 26. First down, Lafayette. So Delaware actually, when all was said and done, actually went backwards on that drive to the 26-yard line, lost about three yards on the drive after they forced the turnover. Just over 10 minutes to go, third quarter. DeNoble keeps trying to get away and swarmed under. Good pursuit there. Mateo Van Damia, number seven, forced him to turn it inside. Good read by the quarterback right there. The defensive end converged on the running back, and that's his read. He had a pull read right there. So pull means he goes down here to do a great job of cutting the down in half, or cutting the yardage in half. Now it's second and five. Lafayette looks so unstoppable on offense to start the game, forcing turnovers, getting quick scores offensively. They've slowed down a bit offensively, and I'm going to ask you after this play, how do they get back on track? You don't really notice it because they're up three touchdowns. Now they're going to throw it deep down the far side. It's incomplete. The game is not over. They're up by 15. It's where you want to be, but they've still got to keep moving the ball offensively. Yeah, they do. The one thing you cannot do is get conservative just because that's when you start you allow teams to start to mount a comeback. You get conservative, you go into your shell. You want to stay aggressive, just like how you did coming out of the locker room and into this game. Keep the foot on the gas pedal and stay aggressive. All game, they've been lining up quickly and then looking to the sideline for the play call. On third down here, clock stopped with nine and a half minutes to go. Here we go, cover zero again. They're coming after him. Showing blitz. Got to get the ball out quick. Seven players bunched at the line for Delaware. They pull it back. DeNoble will run. He will be undercut right at the first down marker of the 36. He does have it. Play clock almost ran out there. Like somebody landed underneath him that time, too. We saw him laboring in the first half. DeNoble very gingerly gets to his feet. Now he'll go back down and be tended to by the athletic training staff. Dean DeNoble is the starting quarterback for Lafayette. The backup is Ryan Schuster, a sophomore who started four games last year before suffering a season-ending injury. Take another look at it. The jumble of bodies there, and DeNoble went yeah. down awkwardly. Yeah, we he kind of was laboring in the first half with that foot, and we don't want to speculate, but it looks like a lower body injury of some sort, and he was laboring a little bit in the first half, so might have just re-aggravated it a little bit. DeNoble is sitting up now as they time continue out. to tend to him. Media time. Let's take a timeout. They continue to tend to Dean DeNoble with Lafayette up by 15. Line. Moments ago, Lafayette starting quarterback Dean DeNoble hobbled off the field with the help of some personnel and teammates.
Dean DeNoble is now in the injury tent on the far sideline. The new quarterback is sophomore Ryan Schuster. He actually started the first game of the season against Sacred Heart. DeNoble took over for him and has not given up the starting job since. Schuster, a sophomore from Macomb, Michigan, Detroit area, started four games last year. This is the first time he's played in the last eight games. The big thing with the new quarterback is you want to rely on your run game early on and then give him some quick, easy passes. And it will be Jamar Curtis for a loss of a yard. So you played quarterback at a high level for North Carolina Central. Did you ever have to come into a game cold like this where the starter or whoever was ahead of you on the depth chart got hurt? It actually happened my freshman year. We were playing Hampton. The starter went out with a broken hand. I had to come in and relieve him of his duty. And you're cold, you're freezing. But the best thing for you is you want to go ahead and get that first throw out of the way so you can get the feel for the game. That's why I said give him a quick, easy pass some way, some fashion, just to get him involved in the game and get him in a rhythm. Schuster has only played three games this year, six out of 12, one interception, no touchdowns. Throws a slant. Might have been tipped. It was incomplete, intended for Carson Persing. Third and long. And tables have turned. Delaware came in with its third string quarterback to start the game. Now Lafayette playing with its backup quarterback, facing a third and 11. I'm just hoping I don't have to come down and get warmed up myself mm. coming out of the press box. Mm. <laughs> it's not a warm day, folks. It not, I mean, yeah. it's sunny. Don't let that deceive you. It's only about 40 degrees here in Newark. Quarterback Ryan Schuster facing third and 11 in this Delaware crowd, which is energized. Three-man rush, he'll run it. He's following his blockers, and he's tackled after a short game. They'll have to punt. Davis. Safe play call right there. You don't want to you don't want to put your offense in a bad spot. You're just going to play the field position game. So they just called a quarterback draw, which is a normal third and long play. Just hoping to get some positive yardage. Just playing the field position game. He'll punt, him, punt the ball away and hope force Delaware to drive the length of the field. Jordan Townsend back deep to receive it his 25 yard line. The punt of Jacob Trestick. Rugby style kick. Townsend takes a fair catch at the 26. We'll step aside just past the midway point of the third quarter. No scoring so far in the second half. Lafayette leads it by 15. Lafayette leads Delaware 28 13. NCAA FCS championship coverage continues next weekend with second round coverage beginning Saturday on ESPN. Plus, for more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Delaware fell behind in this game 28 to 7, but its defense has started to step up. They have not allowed Lafayette to score since 30 seconds into the second quarter. So it's been roughly 23 minutes of game action since the Lafayette offense has scored. Their game is there to get back into two scores down as Minakuchi comes back out on offense. Big possession right here. You want to see them get some type of points on this drive. A touchdown would be great, and they've shown that they want to be aggressive on offense. Let's see what they do on this drive. Minakuchi, quick pass near side, caught by Harvin, going backwards, and fights his way back forward to the original catch spot. Gain of about five on the play. The running back was Joe Nathan Silver. As you mentioned in the last drive, that Marcus Yarns was not in there, the star running back for Delaware. He is number 21. But we've seen a lot of Quincy Watson on that last drive when they got down close to the goal. And Yarns not in there right now. Whistles. And a penalty. Ball start. Offense, number five, five-yard penalty, main second down. We've talked about how infrequently these teams are penalized. Just the third penalty for Delaware. Lafayette has three as well. No, 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 fourth penalty. Check that. They had the uh, illegal forward pass and then the false start. Four penalties for Delaware. This will back them up back close to the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it second and ten. Clock running with six and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Winner moves on to face Montana in the second round next week. 
Big hole up the middle, Joe Nathan Silver breaks into the open field. Silver along the near side of the 40, stutter step and out of bounds, close to the 30 yard line. Huge run for Joe Nathan Silver, his longest of the season. Getting back to their identity. They want to be able to run the football, and that's what Ryan Cardi said coming into the game. We want to lean on this big offensive line. We know we have the size advantage. Let's let them go to work. 41 yard carry for Silver. Quick pass near side, caught by Harvin. And darts forward close to the first down marker. Delaware into offensive territory now with six minutes to go. Once you're able to run the ball successfully, it really opens up your offense so much. So the big 41 yard carry for Silver is the longest play from scrimmage Delaware's had today. Silver will get it again. Big hole up the middle. Joe Nathan Silver has a first down inside the 20. Silver, a sophomore from Washington Township, New Jersey, came into the game with only 73 yards rushing on the entire season. Kyron Cumbie, their usual backup running back, is out today. He was hurt a couple of weeks ago. Yarns is not in there as well. So the attrition battle here, and now it's a guy like Silver who entered the game third on the depth chart, making an impact here late. Joe Nathan Silver inside the five, tripped up, and he fumbled the ball, but he was down. The ground caused the fumble. It'll be first and goal. I think they found something here mm. with this nub tight end form formation. So nub tight end formation is you have a single tight end. You have a single tight end all by himself on one side of the formation, and you run trips with three receivers to the top for the formation. That creates run lanes, but also it forces defensive backs to come downhill and tackle to it. Brown did cause the fumble there. Silver goes out of the game. Quincy Watson comes in. Silver was a little gimpy getting up. First and goal again now for Delaware from inside the 10. It's a handoff for Watson up the middle for a touchdown. Quincy Watson's first touchdown of the season, 28-19. Big holes created by that offensive yeah. line all drive. Yeah. Now you see the size advantage coming in handy. They're starting to lean on this Lafayette defense a little bit. And Delaware is really playing the numbers game or the long game here of saying we're just going to look to wear down this defense. We know we have the size advantage with their offensive line averaging 309 pounds. And Lafayette's defensive line only averaging 261. So they're leaning on the run game here. They'll go for two. They're three for three on two-point conversions this year is Delaware. Shovel pass. Watson up the middle. Hammered down. Did not get the conversion. Big play there by Terrell Cannon. Twenty-eight, nineteen. So now a nine-point lead. Once again, leaning on that running game here, and Quincy Watson with a walk-in score. Starting to lean on this running game a little bit more, taking the game out of the quarterback's hands. And the quarterback has made some nice throws, but the running game is where this team is really starting to lean on. But they went with a quick option or pitch read right there and a great tackle uh, by number 13, Reggie Thomas. A great job by him. But I don't understand the decision there just because if you kick the field goal, it's still a one possession game with the eight point game. But also, if you go for two, it makes it a seven point game. So I don't really understand the thought process, process right there. They didn't have to go for two. I would have rather them kick the field goal. It was Reggie Thomas, the junior, who made the stop there, number 13. Delaware has now scored 12 unanswered points going back to the first half. The kick, Nate Reed. Fair catch called for. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. Now, who is coming out at quarterback for Lafayette? DeNoble was hurt on the last drive. It is number 15, Ryan Schuster. So Ryan Schuster is the backup quarterback. Questionable whether or not DeNoble is going to be able to return to this game. So for now, it's Schuster, the sophomore, a former starter, who's going to get the call at quarterback. Yeah, this is interesting just because DeNoble, he brings that mobile factor to the game. But with Schuster, he's more so of your traditional pocket passer of where he wants to pick defenses apart from inside of the pocket. So you're going to miss that mobile or that running element from the quarterback position.
See if they can reestablish Jamar Curtis, but a flag before the drive even started. It's going to be a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense, number 15. Five yard penalty. Mays first down. Loss of five yards. First down and 15. Jamar Curtis doesn't like it. They took a long time to run onto the field and get all set. Schuster actually ran to the middle of the field where he thought the drive was going to start. Then he went back over to the far hash. So immediately a five-yard penalty gets him behind the sticks. First down and 15. Schuster in trouble. Throws far side. Nobody home. Incomplete. Ryan Schuster's pass incomplete. Second down. Can they reestablish Jamar Curtis? Delaware's done a better job on him. That's going to be the key, but defensive coordinator Manny Rojas knows that he has a quarterback back there that's not mobile, so he doesn't fear the mobility factor of the quarterback, and he has to get the sack. They have to bring him down right there, and that's how you create uh, the quarterback into some disadvantageous situations of making him already start in second and 15, but mm. it could have been second and 20 or even worse right there. Ty Davis on the pressure for Delaware. Curtis darting his way forward. Good job to make something out of nothing there. But picks up only about four yards on the play and sets up another third and long. And these are the situations that Lafayette has to avoid now with the new quarterback. You don't want to force him into those third and long situations. I would have liked to see them try to establish the running game a little bit earlier on with Jamar Curtis and getting him into some creative situations as opposed to just running them up the middle so much. Lafayette has struggled on third down today, two out of eight for the season. They're sixth in the country, 49%. But have not had as much luck today. Schuster's 0 for 2 passing the ball. Obvious passing situation here unless they run the quarterback draw again. Third and 11. Back to pass. Pressure's on. Throws. Almost intercepted. Intended for Carson Persing. He was into traffic. It'll be fourth down. Tide is slowly turning in this game. You have a you have a quarterback that's immobile back there, so the defense is really, really coming after him just because they know, unlike the noble, he can't take off and run. So there's so much stress in this offensive line to protect him, and there's no fear factor of him taking off and getting some of that yard. On to punt again, Jacob Trustick. Lafayette scored its last point about 30 seconds into the second quarter. Wobbly kick. Townsend makes the fair catch at the 39. Delaware was down 28 to 7 in this game. They turned it over four possessions in a row in the first half, led to Lafayette taking a 28 to 7 lead. They scored just before the half on a long touchdown pass to make it 28 13. They just scored again to make it 28 19. They missed both conversions after those touchdowns. The bracket. Sacramento State picks up the win. They're into the next round against South Dakota. North Dakota State all over Drake. Chattanooga, Austin Peay, close game so far. You see the bracket winner here moves on to face Montana next Sunday night, Saturday night, I should say, at 9 p.m. Delaware with all the momentum. Minakuchi play action, looking deep. Minakuchi standing in the pocket, comes near side. He will start to run. He gets a good block on the edge, and then he is wrangled down at the 48-yard line, a gain of nine. They went for a shot play right there. They were trying to design it over the middle, trying to put pressure on the safety. And if he would have got just a little bit more time, he had his wide receiver down the field. They were trying to get it to, jo to Joshua Youngblood. He just missed him. If he even had one more second to throw the ball, he had him in a great situation right there. Excuse me, that actually was Chandler Harvin. If he just, just could have got one more second, he could have got it to him. Makes something out of nothing, though. A positive play. It's a handoff up the middle for a first down across midfield to the 44. Quincy Watson and Jonathan Silver toting the rock now. We have to assume there's something going on with Marcus Yarns, who hasn't been seen in quite some time. But Delaware moving the ball smartly here into Lafayette territory. Really starting to lean on this running game. They're getting back to their original game plan, right. which is no turnovers and lean on this running game. And Coach Ryan Cardi said this offensive line group is really starting to come together. and They've grown, and the maturation process has been fun to watch. And he probably said going into halftime, we're going to lean on you guys in the second half. They throw it out into the flat. It's caught by Youngblood. And a solid open field tackle 
sticking with it. Jalen Edwards, number 35, would not let him go. That was a great tackle by Jalen Edwards right there, trying to put him in a situation of a one-on-one -on -one of where, with Youngblood, if he make, if he breaks a tackle right there, it could go for an explosive play, but he comes up, comes to balance, and makes a terrific tackle. Ryan Carty is also the offensive coordinator for Delaware. He calls the plays, and you can tell he bristles a little. He's like, hey, everybody thinks I'm a pass all the time guy, right? And he said, gun to my head, I'm going to call a pass play. But we can run the ball. We can be a balanced offense, and they've relied on that here in the second half. This time it'll be a pass. Minakuchi throws into the flat wide open. First down, Youngblood darts up the sideline inside the 35. And this is a team that can run the ball. They had a three-game stretch this year against North Carolina a t Hampton, and Townsend of where they racked up 785 yards rushing. So it's more so of a flavor of the week, and whoever has the hot hand or whichever phase of the game is working that week, whether it's run or pass, they're comfortable going with that. 17-yard pass there. He said, we want to be balanced, but balance doesn't mean you call 50% running plays and passing plays. It means when you have to run the ball, you can if the weather dictates it, the game dictates it. Minakuchi play action, a lot of time. Now flushed out of the pocket, flag down. Minakuchi throws far sideline, caught for a first down near the 15. There is a flag in the backfield. I can make it a hold, so this play could be coming back. Holding, offense, number 54, 10-yard penalty, Maine's first down. Right tackle, Fenton Bros. And I've got to say it. The dad joke in me. Braden Bros and Fitton Bros are brothers. They are They're bros. bros. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew you were going to say they are bros. Once again, got to keep those hands inside. The DN tries to come around, and he just pulls them down to the ground. Once again, that's going to catch the eye of the official immediately. Fitton Bros, third team, all CAA, second time. He's been selected as all league since switching over to the offensive line. Final minute of the third quarter. Good running over the left side. Jonathan Silver, flag down. Looks like a face mask coming up here against Lafayette. He's tackled at the 35-yard line. So what did we say? These teams are amongst the least penalized teams in the country. The flag's flying left and right now. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 93. That 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Joe Nathan Silver has been a spark. Yeah, it's him and Quincy Watson. They're doing a good job of filling in. We're not sure what's happened to Marcus Yarns, but they've done a great job of filling in so far. Final 20 seconds, clock running here, third quarter. Delaware down by nine. Minakuchi straight drop, pressure's on, steps up in the pocket, looks to run. Minakuchi's got some space in the open field, spun down and dropped at the six-yard line on what will be the final play of the third quarter. He's to the seven-yard line. Delaware gathering momentum. They score the only six points of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go to determine who takes the next step to the national championship. Lafayette 28, Delaware 19. We head to the fourth quarter at Delaware Stadium right after this. The marching band back from Thanksgiving break and the rest of this Delaware crowd of over 4,000 has seen their Blue Hens rip off 12 unanswered points going back to the first half and open the fourth quarter down by nine, but facing a first and goal from the seven yard line. You see those stats in that third quarter. Delaware had 125 yards, Lafayette had 15, and Delaware is now actually outgaining Lafayette for the game. Robert Lee, Jordan Reed, our entire terrific ESPN crew from Newark, Delaware, first round of the SCS championship. Minakuchi back to pass, pressure's on, throws over the middle. It is caught for the Delaware touchdown. Braden Bros, and it's 28 25. Go. They go back to that, that formation that they like that I talked about earlier with the enough tight end. So the tight end is over there all by himself, and they run trips or three receivers to the other side. This puts pressure on that lone cornerback back there. They like the matchup with the small cornerback against the big tight end and Braden Bros. Braden Bros has four touchdowns this year, all of them in the last five games. 
a sixth year grad student from Irwin, Pennsylvania, just east of Pittsburgh. On for the extra point is Alex Schmoke. It is up, it is good. Just five seconds into the fourth quarter, Delaware has pulled to within two. They have scored now 18, no, 19 unanswered points in a row going back to the end of the first half. The, the momentum of this game has completely shifted, and Lafayette needs a big play here, whether it's on special teams, a defensive turnover, or creating explosive play on offense. It's because they haven't scored a point this half, and Jamar Curtis only has four touches in the second half, and he's already gotten to that magic number of 25. He's right on it right now, but I want to see him exceed that number. With the backup quarterback in, you have to ride your playmakers. Jamar Curtis is clearly their best player on offense. Let's give some credit to Nick Minacucci, who started the game. Wasn't getting a lot of help from his receivers, but he threw three interceptions right away to start the game. He has really bounced back with some solid throws. We've seen the growth and the maturation of him within games. A lot of coaches, they could have even taken the quarterback out to right. cool him down a little bit, but credit to Ryan Cardi for sticking by his quarterback. He understands that he's young, and he let him grow up in the moment of the game. Now we're starting to see some competitiveness come out. You saw him motioning first down to some linebackers and things like that, so he's fully invested in the game right now after having a lot of mess-ups early on. Sometimes there's some quarterbacks that need that, but he's fully engaged in the game right now, and this offense is rolling. Second touchdown pass of the game for Minicucci, the freshman from North Jersey and Don Bosco prep. Now, Lafayette, you have not scored since roughly 30 minutes ago of game action. The first part of the second quarter, you've got your backup quarterback in, Ryan Schuster. You talked about Curtis. His impact has been limited. They're teeing off on Curtis, stopping the run. What's the plan here for offensive coordinator T.J. Demuzio? Well, I think you have to ride Curtis, and everybody in the stadium knows that number 22 is going to get the ball here, but you have to at least try to give him the ball and then build your passing game off of that just because they're going to start to sell out on the run now. You can see the safeties are really low just because everybody knows that Jamar Curtis is getting the ball, so they're going to have to try something down the field eventually too to loosen that box up a little bit. Quick bubble screen out to the near side and tackled for a loss. It was Elijah Stewart on the catch. Negative play to start the drive. Delaware's defense starting to tee off now. Really gathering momentum here in the second half. Second and long. Curtis gets the carry. Short gain, maybe a yard. They're just selling out on the run. They know number 22 is getting the ball, and they're just converging on him right away. Everybody in the stadium knows he's getting the ball, so they're going to have to figure out a way to get something down the field just to loosen this defense up a little bit. If I recall, this is the third consecutive drive. They've had exactly third down and 11. They're two out of nine on third down. You would obviously rather third and one, not third and 11. This has been a difficult situation for Schuster. This crowd as loud as it's been the entire day. Delaware Blue Hen faithful in full throat. Lafayette on the ropes. Schuster steps up in the pocket. Flag down. Schuster fumbled the ball. It's on the ground at the 10 yard line. Delaware looks like they've got it. It's going to be a hold on the right tackle. Flag on the play. The result of the play is a fumble recovered by the defense. Holding offense, number 67. That penalty's declined. First down, Delaware. The Blue Hens defense flexes its muscle again. Here they come. Nobody can block number 12, Chase McGowan, right now. He's been the best player for the Blue Hens defense so far today. Great job by him creating those turnovers. Uh, just an inopportune time for the Leopard offense to have their first turnover a day of the day. It couldn't have come at a worse time. Give credit to number 93, Jack Hall, as well as zero, Jackson Taylor, converging on that. And it looked like it was Trainer who may have come up with a fumble recovery. So now, Delaware, chance to take the lead. First and 10 from just outside the 10-yard line. Handoff, right side. 
Lowering the shoulder inside the 10 to the 8. I keep saying this. They love this nub tight end formation just because they found something with this now. The nub tight end just means he's by his lonesome. Number 9, Braden Rose, right there. Um, he's, he's by his lonesome on the, the nub tight end side, which was to the right. And then they have trips to the other side. But they're going empty right here. So Five let's see receiver what the set here. does. Second down and about six. Empty backfield. Minakuchi keeps over the right side. He dives for the end zone, flags down. He's down at the one yard line. There is a flag down. Multiple flags. He's in the area of right tackle, Fenton Bros. Minakuchi gets up a little gingerly. Holding offense, number 54. 10 yard penalty. Remains second down. Fitton Bros, the right tackle called again. Number 54, you see him on the right side of the screen. His hands are outside. That's a hold all day long. As soon as the official sees, once again, that defender trying to detach and stick that big arm out there, it's going to be a magnet. It's going to draw the attention of the officials right away, and that was a clear hold. His hands have to stay on the inside. Number seven, Blamasi Mete, engaged in that embrace with Bros. It'll set up a second and long. Again, though, a field goal takes the lead here for Delaware. That missed two-point conversion earlier. One of the differences in the game right now. Second and long. Harvin in motion. Minakuchi facing the pressure over the middle. Caught for the touchdown! Braden Bros, second of the game of the quarter. Delaware takes the lead. They just have no answer for this no tight end formation. And once again, the tight end is by his lonesome, Braden, Ro Braden Bros. And they found something that they really like. And they're attacking number 25, Gabe DeBose. In this no tight end formation, they've scored every single touchdown of the second half in that formation. They like it a lot. Once again, go with what you like. Could be a taunting penalty here at the end of the play. I think they waved it off. There is no foul for a necessary roughness. Number 75. Result of the play. Touchdown. 18 yard touchdown. 18 yard strike from Minakuchi to Braden Bros. His second touchdown of the quarter. Caps off a quick two play, 12 yard drive. After the turnover. On for the extra point, Alex Schmoke. Kick is up and good. Going back to the end of the first half, Delaware has ripped off 26 points in a row. The turnovers, the story has turned. Lafayette turning it over in the second half. Delaware, 26 unanswered to take a 33-28 lead. Braden, Brad Student, fifth touchdown catch of the season, second of the quarter. Blue Hens have taken the lead. Delaware has come all the way back to take the lead with just over 12 minutes to go after a short scoring drive of two plays, 12 yards. Braden Bros, second of the quarter, took just over a minute. Minakuchi, three touchdown passes for the freshman. And now for the first time in this game, Delaware has the lead. Lafayette playing from behind for the first time. The game was tied at seven early on. Kick is away and it will sail to a fair catch. Lafayette starts on the 25. And turnover for Lafayette on their last drive led to the quick touchdown. It did, and they found something that they really like with this nub formation tight end. What are some of the advantages of it? It forces your corner to guard the tight end. So what they're doing is they're just boxing the corner out and they're taking advantage of it, whether it's in the run game or it's in the pass game. Now in the run game, it puts that tight end on the corner, but now you're asking him to maintain outside leverage, and that's just something that any corner in America could not do that consistently against a tight end. New quarterback for Lafayette. They have switched to the third quarterback of the game. It is a Sean Davis, a junior 
who will be the third quarterback to play now for Lafayette. Schuster was ineffective. Davis takes the snap and hands it off for Curtis, who runs over the right side. Curtis with one of their better plays of the second half. They came in with 15 plays in the second half for a total of two yards. A uh, Sean Davis, a junior from Willingboro, New Jersey. Now, he is also experienced. Over the last two seasons, he's played 18 games. In fact, he started games in 21, 2021. However, this is only his fourth game this season. He has attempted only two passes all season. And he brings some of that mobility factor to the game, which is what they were missing when DeNova went down with the injury earlier on. So Sean Davis, Jr. from Willingboro, New Jersey, the third quarterback to play. We have to assume that DeNoble is out of the game. Curtis spun down. Mateo Van Damia, number seven, in there for the first stop. Much more disciplined defense from Delaware in this half. They're not running up to the line of scrimmage. They're not rushing. And you can see the linebackers are standing pat a little bit. They're letting Jamar Curtis commit to see if he wants to run up the middle. But what we saw in the first half, they were coming too fast up to the first level, and he was just bouncing everything outside. Crowd roaring here, third down. Davis takes the snap, back to pass, throwing deep far side as a wide open man across midfield, on his feet inside the 30, and tackled inside the 25 yard line. A huge play for Lafayette. It was Dallas Holmes, the backup tight end. And we haven't said the tight end's names a lot today. They haven't been able to get them going in the passing game, but they ran a switch concept right there. So all they did was exchange the responsibilities of the tight end and the wide receiver outside, sending both of them on verticals, but that forces the corner and the safety to communicate, and they weren't able to pass them off. 50-yard gain for Holmes, the sophomore from Bethlehem, PA. Curtis picking his way forward, and he is close to a first down at the 15. We got a shout out, Dallas Holmes. Great uncle, let's look at Holmes' catch again here. His great uncle is the great Larry Holmes, the Easton assassin, former heavyweight champion of the world. Not too bad, right? No. Not too bad at all. Going back to the passing play right there, big gain by Dallas Holmes. That was an outstanding call. Quick handoff for Curtis, breaking tackles. Turns upfield inside the 10, lowers his shoulder for a first down to the seven yard line. And just when it looked like Lafayette was going nowhere on offense, they switched quarterbacks again, and now they're inside the 10. Jamar Curtis is so slippery. He just gets skinny, goes through the holes. He's so slippery going through the first and the second level. Sometimes there's a hole there. And even when it's not there, he just finds a way to get skinny and create those explosive plays. And that's what we're seeing so far on this drive. This is exactly what the Leopard offense needed. First and goal for Lafayette. Comes in with a 9-2 and two record, the Patriot League champion. Davis throws the fade near side for Stewart. Tried to make the one-handed catch. Good coverage there from Delaware. It'll be second and goal. Just like what we talked about with the Delaware offense when they tried the red zone fade or the goal line fade, there's everything that has to go right. The throw has to be perfect. The receiver has to be perfect, and he has to go up and get the ball. The red zone fade, there's so much as far as dependency, as far as everything going right, and everything wasn't able to go right for the Leopard offense. Nine and a half to go. The sun has mostly set here in Newark. The lights are on. Nine and a half to go, fourth quarter. They're coming after him right here. He's got to get the ball out quick. Down to five on the play clock. They get the play away. It's a handoff for Curtis. Oh, a touchdown saving tackle. Huge play there by KT Say, the freshman safety. That was a great play by the safety right there. They ended up running an all-out blitz, just trying to heat the quarterback up. They were expecting the pass, but sometimes you want to run a quick run, hopefully, hoping that all those defenders run right past the running back, but the, the safety ends up coming downhill and making a, making a play right there. That was a great play. Third and goal from the three. Huge sequence in this game with nine minutes to go. Curtis up the middle, pushing his way forward about a yard short of the end zone. It'll be fourth and goal. John Troxell is the Patriot League Coach of the Year. He is, looks like he's going to go for it here to try to take the lead with eight and a half remaining. Biggest play of the game right here. Huge play. Huge play. Keep an eye on the tight ends. They like to incorporate the tight ends, especially in the red zone. Delaware may sell out 
on the run right here. And you can sneak one of those tight ends out of the backfield or out of the, the attached tight end set on a pop pass or something like that. So keep an eye on the tight ends. This is where the money is made. 68% on fourth down this year. Lafayette, 10th in the country. One out of one today. Have to get it into the end zone, fourth and goal. LaShawn Davis, the third string quarterback. To Curtis. Short. Did not get it. There's a flag on the near side of the field. There's a flag at the two yard line. I think he's signaling it's going to be encroachment against the defense. Oh, wow. All sides. Defense, number 26. Half the distance to the goal. Range fourth down. Cornerback a Corey Lied. Right in front of you, 26. He was lined up offsides, a second chance for Lafayette. Again, he never checked with the referee. All he has to do is check with the ref prior to the snap to make sure that he's off, or make sure that he's on his side of the ball. But he never checked with the ref right there. He's clearly in the neutral zone. That was a clear penalty. Fourth and goal from inside the one. Lafayette trying to take the lead. Curtis to the left of Davis. RPO, Curtis up the middle, fighting in for the Lafayette touchdown. Leopards take the lead with a huge drive. They will go for two here to try to make it a three-point lead midway through the fourth quarter. This is a very, very interesting call by John Troxel, but I definitely understand it, especially with it coming later on in the game. He doesn't want to lose by a field goal. Lafayette on the season after Curtis's fourth touchdown of the game, three rushing, one receiving, clearly in there. Lafayette is 0 for 1 on two-point conversion plays this season. They've only attempted one. They did not convert. This to make it a three-point lead. Designed run went nowhere. The two point conversion is no good. With seven minutes, 25 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Lafayette retakes the lead by a point. Huge, huge drive right there by the Lafayette Leopards. Exactly what they needed. We have a tight contest here at Delaware. Lafayette going back and forth. Big possession right there. They ended up taking the lead 34 to 33. Lives. Lafayette opened up a 28-7 lead. Delaware answered with 26 points in a row to take the lead. Now Lafayette, a huge drive. Nine plays, 75 yards, almost five minutes. Jamar Curtis having a big day. The first team All-Patriot League selection finalist for the Walter Payton Award. Four touchdowns in the game. And fresh off a three touchdown game against Lehigh. He's doing a really good job so far today, and he's far exceeded that magic number of 25 touches that I wanted to see him get today. The offense is at his, or the, off, the Leopards offense, excuse me, is at their best when Jamar Curtis is incorporated in so many different ways. Lafayette retakes the lead, short kick, fair catch called for, and Delaware will start from there. So Delaware has found its stride in the second half, have caused some turnovers, have had some short fields. They've scored three touchdowns in the second half. The two most recent Minakuchi to Braden Bros touchdown passes. But now facing a long field again, they're not getting it at the 10-yard line like they have a couple of times from their own 27 first and 10. Biggest drive of the game right here mm. for Delaware. They have an opportunity to once again take that lead back. And they've been clicking on all cylinders so far. Minakuchi for the game. Now 13 out of 22, three touchdowns. And they've gotten the running game going with Jonathan Silver primarily as it's a carry out to the 31-yard line, gain of about four. Silver, five carries, 70 yards coming into this drive. That was Watson. He had seven carries for 35 yards and a touchdown before that run. But we mentioned Minakuchi, 13 of 22, 153, three touchdowns, three interceptions, but those were all in the first half. Running it up the middle, Watson lowers his helmet. And we'll set up a third down. 
Now, Delaware is behind by a point here. There's only 6.40 to go. So a key conversion coming up here. Third down. Delaware only three out of nine on third down today. 0 for 2 on fourth down. Six and a half remaining. Big down right here. Once again, they go back to the nub tight end formation that we've been talking about. Tight end by himself. They may target number nine right here. It's a handoff for Watson, and he tumbles forward for the first down past the 37. It is enough to move the sticks. The formation has been their bread and butter. This second half, they found something that they really like, whether it's the passing game or the running game. And I expect them, whenever there's a crucial moment in the game, they're going to go back to that nub tight end formation. Time becoming a factor as we pass six minutes to go, each team with all three timeouts left. Go right away. Went back to it. This time set up to the left of quarterback Nick Minicucci, true freshman. Straight drop, throws far side, caught by Youngblood, and a positive gain on first down out past the 40. Clock running with five and a half minutes to go. Lafayette looking for its first ever FCS playoff win. They are 0-4. They have not been in the championships, the FCS championships, since 2013. Delaware looking to go to the second round for a second straight year. It's the first time they've made the playoffs in back-to-back -back years in 20 years. Silver. Hard running, close to another first down, but about a yard short. Like Delaware's trying to bleed the clock mm. on this drive, trying to establish that running game, let this big offensive line lean on that little bit undersized leopard defensive line, and they're doing a good job of moving the ball, but this is a big third down right here. Again, Delaware has two kickers they use regularly. Nate Reed, a junior with kind of a bigger leg, has been the primary field goal kicker over the last six or seven games. Silver. First down. Got it by about a foot as Delaware continues to run the clock and move down the field, but they are down by a point. They don't want to take too much time in case they get stopped on this drive. This is a good drive for Delaware. This is exactly what they wanted. They've established the running game now. The big thing for Lafayette's defense is the defensive bats can't fall asleep mm. just because they're running the ball, they're running the ball, they're running the ball. Before you know it, they're going to run a play action and try to dump the ball over your head, over their head, so they can't fall asleep on the back end. Good protection. Minakushi flushed out of the pocket to the right, throws over the middle, wide open. Quincy Watson inside the 40, Watson on the run inside the 30, and tackled at about the 25-yard line. Another big gain, we'll call it 27 yards on the play, and Delaware in business. Once again, Minakushi's mobility coming into the equation. A great job, some off-script ad-libbing manipulation plays right there, being able to come outside of the pocket and dump it off to Quincy Watson for the big gain. That's exactly what they needed. Time-consuming drive now, just three and a half minutes to go. Both teams have three timeouts left. And you start strategizing here. If you're Lafayette and Delaware gets in chip shot field goal range, you may need to stop the clock so you have time left. Braden Bros in motion. Handoff for Watson. To the 23-yard line. Just a short gain on the play. So under three minutes to go, both teams, all three timeouts left. This is not a chip shot from here by any means. This is about a 40-yard field goal from this spot. There's not a lot of wind today. Delaware would love nothing more than to take the rest of the time and punch it in for some sort of score, preferably a touchdown. And if you're Ryan Carter, you're telling your quarterback, just slow down. Right. Let's run clock. Let's give ourselves an opportunity. We should be a no rush right here. Good protection. Minakuchi, all kinds of time, standing in the pocket, flushed out, throws over the middle, caught, first down to the 10-yard line. Looked like young blood on the catch again. So now this is a short field goal from here. The clock running with 2.20 to go. This would only be about a 28-yard field goal to take the lead. And now if you're Lafayette, you got to start to think about using some timeouts so you can give yourself an opportunity mm. to get the ball back. And sometimes we've seen some opportunities or we've seen some situations of where the defense just lets the offense score right. so they can get the ball back. Now it is first and goal. So at the most, they can only run four more plays from this point. But there's under two minutes to go. Minakuchi keeps. 
and gains maybe a yard. Lafayette will call its first timeout. They had to call a timeout there because you can't let all the time go off the clock. Minute 49 remaining. We will step aside as well. A thriller here in Newark. Lafayette leads it by a point. Tense times here in the final two minutes at Delaware Stadium. Nate Reed has been doing most of the field goal kicking, and he was warming up into the kicking net if he is caught on for a go-ahead field goal here. You see his numbers for the season. He is 7 out of 7 inside 40 yards. A junior from Mannheim, Pennsylvania. But still work to be done. Lafayette just took its first timeout. They have two more timeouts. It's second and goal from the 9-yard line. If you're Delaware, do you have to run here to make them take another timeout, or can you surprise them with a high percentage pass? You can. Um, I would run the ball just so you're making sure that you're forcing them to use those timeouts. High snap. It is a running play. And a gain of about two, and Lafayette will use another timeout. 23. Timeout. Second timeout for the Leopards and head coach John Troxel. What is at stake? This is the FCS championship first round. Winner of this game, very much in doubt. Moves on to face Montana, the number two overall seed. The Grizz waiting out in Missoula, watching this game, I'm sure. Nine o'clock start next Saturday in Big Sky Country. The winner faces Montana, Sacramento State has already moved on. North Dakota State well on its way. Chattanooga with the lead over Austin P. 24 teams make the playoffs. The top eight get a seed. They're seeded one through eight. Montana's the number two seed. Lafayette looking to win its first ever FCS playoff game. They're 0-4 all time. Delaware. Won the national title back in 03, five other national championships, although back in the, from the roughly the 40s to the 70s. This one hanging in the balance. Third and goal. Lafayette down to one timeout left. From here would be about a 26 yard field goal. Guess what formation they're in? <laughs> no tight end. Keep an eye on number nine, Braden Bros right here. And it's a handoff for Watson, and he'll take it to the middle of the field, setting up a straight-on chip shot field goal from the six-yard line timeout. as Lafayette, Lafayette uses its final timeout. This is their final charge timeout. But here we go. Coming on this from the sideline. Now, the other kicker is number 37, Schmoke. He is mainly their extra point kicker. It does not appear that he's going to go out there. As we said, they've been using two kickers. One, the Nate Reed, certainly from that look on our camera, doesn't look like he's going out there. Yeah. So it is going to be Schmoke. Yeah, so number 37 is going into the huddle. Yep. Alex Schmoke, who is primarily a shorter distance kicker. He started the year as the starting kicker. He went 0 for 3. They went to Reed, kind of the hot hand. Now Schmoke coming out for the biggest kick of the season. He's a transfer from St. Francis of PA, played four years there. Will be from Again, 0 for 3 on field goals this year. Missed his first extra point of the season earlier in this game. At St. Francis, he was 33 for 39, 85%. This will be a 23-yard attempt to give Delaware the lead out of the hold of Ryan Costa punter. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. The kick is good. Alex Schmoke gives Delaware the lead with a minute 37 to go. Big time drive and a great finish to cap off the drive right there with the field goal. That is a big time play by everybody involved. And now it's in the defensive's hands to win the game. There is an injured player on the field. It appears to be a Lafayette player. Looks like Ty Smallwood, Taylor Smallwood, what is the injured player number 20. Actually, I think that was him coming off the edge on the near side. Number 20 to the left of your screen. Got kind of tripped up on the way there. They tend to him at about the 12-yard line. So Schmoke would come in 0 for 3. And again, Reed had kind of taken over the field goal kicking duty. Schmoke comes up with a big kick there. The grad student from Bellwood, Pennsylvania, near Altoona. 
and he gives Delaware the lead, but still a minute 37 to go. Lafayette only needs a field goal to take the lead. They are out of timeouts, however. But in college, the clock stops as Smallwood is walking off the field slowly. The clock does stop on first downs. They just drove down on their last drive and scored with third string quarterback Ashawn Davis. And Here I'm, we go. Remember this. Remember it was 28 to 19. Lafayette was up. That. Delaware ended up going for yep. two instead of kicking the field goal. How big is that right, right now? Right. <laughs> it could be 37 to 34 as also, opposed to 36 had that to 34. Stretch where they ran eight straight plays yeah. from inside the 10 yard line and didn't get any points. They could have kicked a field goal ifs and buts, right? As Noah Reed will kick it, Nate Reed, I should say, will kick it away for Delaware. There hasn't been a whole lot in the return game for Troy Bruce. Mostly fair catches. Yeah, he's probably going to do it this conserve time. This ball might go out of bounds, oh, which wow. would be a huge penalty. Huge penalty for Delaware. It's going to give Lafayette great field position. And a great job by Bruce just letting that go and taking his chances that it was going to go out of bounds. So this is going to give Lafayette great starting field Kick position. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Number 91. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Lafayette. Ryan Carty did not want that. Lafayette looked good on his last drive. They've got a minute 37 here. They did. Quarterback Sean Davis came in and commanded the offense. They did a really good job, and he had a really good pass down the field to the big tight end, number 89, Dallas Holmes, who's done a really good job for them so far today. And of course, it was capped off by another Jamar Curtis touchdown run. And I expect him to, uh, once again, be involved a lot. But he has to press the tempo. you got to hurry up the tempo on this drive. No timeouts for the Leopards. Only need a field goal to take the lead. Davis play action pressured, rolling out, throws. Will they call grounding? There was a receiver, Stewart, kind of in the area. No grounding on the play, second down. There's no foul for intentional grounding. Number 86 was in the area. Second down. So they have four plays. Obvious four down territory here with no timeouts left. Their kicker, Jack Simonetta, his longest field goal of the season that he's made is 40 yards. So that would require them to get to roughly the 20 to 25 yard line to give him a shot. Got to find Elijah Stewart. He's your playmaker. Pressure off the edge. They throw. Curtis has got it in the open field, and he spun down on a huge open field tackle at the 41 yard line. Clock running now as we come up on a minute to go. That was a big tackle by Corey Lyde right there. If he doesn't make the play on Jamar Curtis, he probably may get the team in field goal range. Mm. He may still be running right now. That was a big, big tackle by him. Third down. Still need four yards for the first down. Davis. Steps up, throws far side, caught first down and out of bounds. Chris Carasia will stop the clock. Jack Simonetta is the kicker. He is a freshman from the Orlando area. He is six out of nine, six out of ten actually, counting the miss earlier in this game. 40 yards is his long for the season. He's one for three from over 40, or 40 or more. Still need about Let's call it 30 yards to get within realistic range. There's not really any wind today. First and 10. Davis pressured. Wrapped up. Throws. Somehow got it away to Curtis, who has no gain on the play. Fumbled the ball. It's loose. Who's got it? Delaware's got it. They're going to win. is a completed catch. Fumbled by the runner, recovered by the defense. First down, Delaware. Wow. Did a great job even getting it to Curtis here. Yeah. Almost miraculously. Gave himself an opportunity. Curtis just has to Show better ball security right there. They had an opportunity to jump on it. Big John Olmstead wasn't able to come down with it. And Delaware's defense makes a big play. 
Turnovers have been the name of this game. Let's take another look at the play. Davis was really Time almost out. in the grasp. Delaware. And it was Just Jackson Taylor. Jackson half. Taylor caused the, the fumble number zero. His the teammates play. recovered it. It's a fumble. Recovered Clearly by the a fumble. Had possession, was moving Delaware. up the field. Jackson Taylor, the All-American at Division II, makes the biggest play of the season for the Delaware defense. Massive, massive play. And it's been a tale of two halves for both teams on both sides of the ball. And the Leopard offense was rolling in the first half, and they got things going once Ashawn Davis was able to come in. And he gave them an opportunity to drive the distance right there, but just an uncharacteristic fumble for Jamar Curtis right there, and it ends up costing them the game. Heartbreaking finish for Lafayette. Their third turnover of the game will be the final nail in the coffin. It'll be the straw that broke the camel's back. Delaware was down 28 to seven in this game, turned it over four times in the first half. And looking at the play clock, there's more time on the play clock than there is on the game clock. Dean DeNoble, the starting quarterback, went out of the game, was unable to return, and a tough finish of the season for Lafayette. Some confusion here as Delaware is running onto the field. They're also looking like they're going to line up for play. There's 13 seconds, 14 seconds left in the game. The delay game clock's not running either. And the play clock says 40. Now, Delaware only needs to take one more knee. Nope, they're going to start the clock. Delaware was down 28 to 7, and behind freshman quarterback Nick Minicucci, they rally for a thrilling 36 34 victory. Great team effort all around. That's a really, really good team win coming back at home. That is the ball game. Delaware wins it 36-34. The Blue Hens advance to take on Montana in the second round. Tough finish to the season for Dean DeNoble, who finishes the game and season on crutches. We'll come back and wrap it up after this. Delaware beats Lafayette 36-34. Back here at Delaware Stadium, where the Blue Hens rally from 21 points down to beat Lafayette 36-34. We're now joined by the winning head coach, Ryan Carty, class of 2006 in his second season, leading the Delaware football program. Coach Robert Lee, Jordan Reed with you. Thank you for the time. You're down 28-7. You, you turn it over four consecutive possessions. As the coaches say, it's going sideways big time there. What kind of resolve? What was the message to the team to, hey, guys, let's, let's steady the ship a little bit here and get it back on track? Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the unique thing is that it was similar to the message we had last night. And, uh, you know, we only had one, one play at a time. That's all we're guaranteed. And, uh, you know, we talked about nothing nothing that's really worth achieving is going to be easy. And so the message didn't really change at halftime because it was a lot harder at that point for us to go out there. And we talked about making some great memories, and, and we really did that. We just played one snap at a time. That's all we had to do. And uh, just so proud of these guys. And the way they fought, the way they stuck in, I mean, that's a culture win right there. That's those guys believing in each other and playing really, really hard and finishing, which is one of our, our three pillars of our program. Coach, your quarterback, Nick Minicucci, he grew up big time in this game. And we both know it, it wasn't the best start to this game. But just talk about his maturation process and how it, how it was a tale of two halves in this game for him. Well, I think what was really special, guys, was the the way that, you know, some of those things were not his fault. I mean, we had a couple mm. couple situations where we just had some bad breaks where there were fumbles and, I mean, uh, and, you know, interceptions that were bouncing off people's hands. And uh, he really just stuck to the game plan and and really didn't – he didn't let it go into quicksand and, and unravel. Uh, just played it one step at a time. It just it, That's really hard to do as a true freshman. And, man, was he special. So, um, I mean, I can't say enough good things about him to be – in this situation, the first true freshman to start in the game uh, for the University of Delaware since 2001. And uh, man, was that a special win. And it was a big game to be starting in. Coach, we know you're an offensive guy. You're an offensive coordinator. Let's dap up the defense a little bit here. <laughs> They're moving up and down the field to start the game. What did you change defensively to, to not only slow them down, but start causing some turnovers? Yeah, well, I think really the main thing was just uh, you know, playing 11-man football. We, we weren't fitting our gaps well in the beginning of the game, and, and we really just tried to do too much, and we were pressing a little bit. So once we settled down, we really, uh, we really started to get into them. 
Coach, you're a quarterback. I'm a quarterback. I was on to you. You really found something with that single tight end formation, the nub tight end <laughs> formation. <laughs> you're laughing just because I, you know exactly what I'm Maybe talking give about. Away with, the secrets. With, That's yeah, why. Yeah. With, with Braden Bros. Just talk about some of the advantages that that gave you in this game. Yeah, well, we did. We found something. I, they were doing such a nice job, you know, early with a couple of the things that they were blitzing our formations the right way and rolling coverages to the correct side. They, they kind of guessed right a bunch uh, early in the game, and then we kind of guessed right the, uh, a couple times in the second half and so just some adjustments at halftime that we saw and, and made sure that you know we could make those plays we know that we have a guy back there if they want to single him up they're going to be a problem uh, uh, trying to cover Braden Bros. Coach congratulations on the win have a safe trip to Big Scott Country next week and we look forward Thank to talking you so to you much. Soon. Appreciate you guys. Ryan Carty, the victorious head coach of the Delaware Blue Hens, who come from behind to pick up a thrilling victory. Let's look at the updated bracket. Delaware moves on to the second round to take on the number two national seed, the Montana Grizzlies, next Saturday night, 9 o'clock start Eastern time, 7 o'clock in Missoula. Montana and Delaware next week. Winner moves on to the quarterfinals. That will do it for Jordan Reed. Robert Lee is saying so long. Fantastic day here at Delaware Stadium in New Ark, Delaware for our entire crew. Robert Lee signing off. It was a fantastic day. Final score, Delaware 36, Lafayette 34. All games airing on the ESPN Networks so are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have a great night, everybody.